Check. 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 You get Okay. She got us. You may not be able to run football route. All right, let's all get ready. USCF Barrow Beach, Christian FM. Bureau Nation Network and Christian FM Sports presents Countdown to Kickoff. Brought to you by Caps Pizza and Pub. Three, two. Football. Christian FM Sports brings you the insights into the Fighting Indians with Matt Paris, Bobby Paris, GT Paris. Gary Paris. Now, the voice of the Fighting Indians, Paul Tipton. The season is set to start, and we are ready for it. Hey, Vero Nation, I'm Paul Tipton. Welcome to the Citrus Bowl and Billy Living's Field. Last week, we watched a preseason matchup with Vero Beach hosting Dwyer. The Indians stumbled early, but by the second quarter, found a groove and did not look back. A 49-0 win on the new turf was a good way to help kick this season off. Now it's for real, and the test for week one, Miami Northwestern, a traditional powerhouse team that will have its own share of talented players. Time to see early if Vero can be the team we all hope they can be. We got 60 minutes to kick off. We got a lot to cover, starting with a chat with our head coach, Lenny Jankowski. He's starting his 13th season here at Vero Beach, and he is with Matt Paris to talk about what the offseason has been like for Vero Beach. Matt? Well, Coach Jankowski, great to see you again. And as usual, we are so excited to kick off another season of football here at Vero Beach High School. So let's talk football. How did the offseason go for the Indians? Let's take it all the way back, Coach, if you don't mind, from the offseason to the spring and work our way right up through the summer for us. Yeah, sounds good. It's great to see you guys. And anytime we're doing this, you know that football is right around the bend. And um, so the offseason was, you know, we've got it broken down into it really is like four four categories. We have the the time from, you know, that we call winter workouts from, from January all the way up until spring practice. And, and during that phase, you know, we, we, we get a lot of gains um, uh, with in the, in the weight room. Uh, we, we try to, you know, the whole bigger, faster, stronger cliche, you know, that, that our guys are looking to, to get bigger, to, to gain strength, to get faster, quicker, all those kinds of things. Uh, we obviously still have a, a, a wide range of, of multi-sport athletes that are involved with other, other sports there. And uh, and again, we're 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 fans of that. Just uh, from a competitive standpoint, I still believe that the competitive spirit is is uh, is one of the qualities that we're always looking for in our players. And anytime they get an opportunity to compete at anything, um, we think there's value to that. And and so, and then we do all of our seven on seven, and uh, you know, you're able to to throw the ball around with your guys and, and compete against other high schools. And we did, uh, did some of that in that, in that winter, uh, winter workout period. And, and then that takes us all the way into spring practice. And as you guys know, we get those 20 days, uh, during the month of May to, uh, to, to, to practice, put shoulder pads on helmets. Um, and then at the end of that, get an opportunity to, to compete against another team. And, and so we, we felt like there was value obviously to that period that transitions us into into summer and and in the summertime you know we get a lot in and in this summer um you know i know we get caught up in in the now and uh but but i I think this summer was as busy as ever as busy as i've ever been as a coach i think our players stayed very active and busy um the month of june just with the college recruiting calendar is uh is altogether different now you know there's there are official visits believe it or not that are going on in june so guys that are getting recruited and getting opportunities we had uh several different players that took official visits uh, in the month of June, we had uh, unofficial visits where, you know, younger guys are getting an opportunity to get on college campuses. Uh, we we visited uh, as a team or as a program uh, nine different colleges during the month of June and played and participated in seven on seven tournaments all across the southeast and, uh, you know, provided our guys with with a lot of 
experience, uh, different uh, competition levels and, and all that's involved with that. So June was very, very busy. And then, you know, in addition to that, of course, we have our summer workouts in the weight room that, that continue to happen. And we do that four days a week uh, during the summertime. And so uh, the month of June came and went. And then, uh, you know, we took the, the week of the 4th of July off, uh, both our players and our coaches uh, get that week off, and then and then you're thinking, wow, we're 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 almost there. You know, we're almost to where practice starts on July 31st. So that last wave of July, uh, we did a team camp, an FCA team camp, where there were nine schools that um, went over to Ave Maria University and and uh, com- competed in in pads, and and uh, you know we get to spend uh, three days and two nights with our guys and sleep in dorms and eat institutional food and all the things that go along with being at camp, you know, and, and, uh, and so, uh, we, we, we had, uh, some bonding there and, and learned a lot about our players and, and, uh, came away from that and, and got ready obviously for the start of the season and what we call fall camp. And that's where we're at, uh, heading into this game tonight. And, and, uh, you know, so we've had, you know, a little less than three weeks of football practice, so to speak, where, you know, we're geared up and, and getting ready for our season, uh, we spent this week in what we call game prep. Uh, so we fir- we spend the first two weeks um, in install, and then we spend this week, uh, you know, uh, in-, in game prep. That's Coach Lenny Jankowski talking about the off season. Coach, uh, football is one of the one sports that uh, does not have a travel ball. You see baseball, volleyball, lacrosse, all of them have travel ball. Football does not have that. So recruiting purposes, the seven on sevens, the camps that you go to, is that in essence would be the 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 same as far as travel ball for the other sports? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a very good comparison. I mean, you know, it is, it, you know, and and we're probably you know all dating ourselves as we sit around talking about this, but you know, the, it, we are that is it, we are probably the last pure sport as far as you know the, the high school season is what is most critical for all of what you're talking about, um, and uh, you know, colleges are still working through high school coaches and. And uh, in working directly with the, the the players on the high school teams, and and so yes, I think that you know uh, recruiting is a big reason why we do a lot of what what we've just described. Um, you know, to give our players an opportunity to be seen, and um, and and to, to experience all of what Christian FM. Cafe 66, located on US 1, just south of 8th Street. At Cafe 66, our breakfast menu is all about variety. From biscuits and gravy, to country fried steak and eggs, to Nutella stuffed French toast. Our lunch and dinner menus have something for everyone. From barbecue platters, to unique burgers. Our hours online at Cafe66Vero.com. We proudly support the Fighting Indians. Geno's Nutrition Shop carries a wide selection of safe supplements for athletes no matter their age, especially regular gym goers. I'm Gino, and we love supporting the Fighting Indians. Our supplements work for muscle recovery, hydration, focus, immunity health, along with grab-and-go meals. At Geno's Nutrition Shop in Miracle Mile, our customers are family. Durfee's Heating and Cooling, a longtime friend and supporter of Christian FM. Durfee's Heating and Cooling offers air conditioning repairs, maintenance, and new installations. Family owned and operated, serving the Treasure Coast area. Durfee's Heating and Cooling, 772 971 5884. More countdown to kickoff by Caps Pizza and Pub. Welcome back. Well, Coach Jay. Let's talk about that facelift here at the Citrus Bowl and that beautiful new turf field we now have. Well, we couldn't be more excited, and and probably most of our fans, most of our listeners are uh, up to date, a lot more up to date on social media than even I am. But um, and and have seen some of these updates that you know that that people have been sharing. It's it's a beautiful complex. It is state of the art. Uh, very very proud of uh, of what we've got. You know, again, kudos to. Um, the school district and our administration and, and, and everybody for making this happen, for everything to stay on in, in, in such a timely manner. And, and uh, to, to be able to play out here tonight is, is, 
in, in one sense, a relief because you see a big project going on like that, and it's you know it's looking like a construction site, and you're thinking, can we really get all this done in, in the summer? And, and I got to be honest, you know, uh, this same company put in our beach volleyball courts um, o- over at the Freshman Learning Center, and and uh, as that project was going on, and they were giving me the the date uh, of completion to, to the estimated date to complete it. Uh, was in March, and I'm thinking there's no way in in, in the world this is going to be this project will be done in March, and, and sure as heck it was done in March, and we have this beautiful you know uh, all these beach volleyball courts, and our our girls uh, get to get to uh, practice and and compete on that every day, and so that 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 gave me you know a, a sense of where we were going to be because the same company here doing uh you know this this beautiful field and and then uh from here they're headed over across the street to to start and and finish that track complex and so uh so we're keeping we're, we're keeping them hostage here and and uh and and we're really you know extremely proud of of this this complex this facility and and of course this turf um our kids are gonna benefit you know here for years to come uh, you know it's going to be a great place to to play games obviously to coach here and 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 for our fans to watch it's just a a beautiful beautiful complex and and uh, some of the the features of this field that maybe some may not know is uh, just the the padding underneath the drainage um, the uh, the quality you know of course we were, we're talking about technology and all that that's involved with that but I was walking around with uh, the the supervisor of the job and he said you know he goes look th- this what with the quality that you have here he said it's the Dallas Cowboys the Houston Texans and and the Vera Beach Fighting Indians he said it's that kind of quality um, and, and, you know, the, the, the company's based out of Texas. And, and so they, they've done the, uh, Miami Dolphins stadium, the, the Jaguar stadium, they, they've got, you know, uh, all, all the different big contracts and big, uh, you know, big complexes. And so we feel great about it. Um, even all the way down to the, the rubberized material that, that goes over the turf once the turf is, is, is laid, um, is, is the type of material that is going to be. 30 to 40 degrees cooler than the, the stuff that you see on the, the black, you know, uh, rubberized tire, shredded tire that, that's on some some of the older uh, turf fields. And, and so we're just we're just very pleased with uh, not just the the, uh, the the appearance, but everything that's underneath and that's gone into it. So, again, we're, we're very excited. Coach, let's talk about this. The artificial turf, like you said, um, it's not. Our dad's, our old AstroTurf, and, uh, you know, when people hear that artificial, they think, well, doesn't that increase injuries and all that? Give us the pros, in addition to what you've already said, just as far as being an athlete on that, as far as injuries go. Yeah, well, I'll, I guess I'll probably start it with, I, I don't know that, you know, I don't know a ton about unions and all that kind of stuff, but I would say, like, the NFL union is probably as strong as everything as far as the, how they protect their players and looking after their players. And so, you know, I, I, I preface that by saying the Dallas Cowboys, the Houston Texans, and the Vera Beach fighting. And so I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure that if there was, there was more risk or larger risk to injury, that the Dallas Cowboys and the Houston Texans and everybody else in the NFL would not be playing on it. Not to mention, you know, all the colleges that are using it and, and, and everybody in between. But, you know, I, I think, like you say, I think the perception is that we're thinking of the old carpet and the concrete that was under the carpet, and that's what AstroTurf is. And I've had multiple conversations with people, and of course, social media, people can go bonkers on that, you know. And uh, and and so, but but just live conversations with people, and just it's just edu- educating them, you know, on what this it, what this quality is. It it really is very comparable to the most plush natural grass you can have. There's no holes, there's no mud piles, there's no sand, there's no sugar sand, there's no worn spots, there's no dead areas, there's no, everything's laser graded, everything, everything's mowed evenly, you know, if you think of it like that, um, and then obviously the ability to practice on it and to utilize it, and then, you know, so, so I had a conversation with somebody who said, well, my granddaughter, you know, tore ACL on, on, on artificial turf, on our artificial surface. Well, we've had, and you being the doctor and you, you know, this better than me, we've had, we, we have injuries all across the board on, on natural grass. You know what I mean? So thing, unfortunately injuries happen. There are very, there are always very inopportune times and unfortunate. We always feel, you know, uh, and there's not anything that's foolproof, but I don't think, you know, in, in my very professional opinion, 
that uh, we have any larger risk for injury. If anything, I think we have a lot less risk of injury by, you know, this new and improved uh, surface that we'll be playing on. And not to mention, it just looks awesome. <laughs> it looks great. Well, that's Coach Jay. We'll be right back. You're listening to Countdown to Kickoff on your Christian FM. Hi, JW from Barker Air Conditioning. These hot and humid days sure do take a toll on your air conditioning system. Barker Air Conditioning offers our ESA annual or semi-annual maintenance plan to keep things in good working order. Barker Air Conditioning, servicing Indian River County since 1959. The Fighting Indians rely on teamwork, and so does Christian FM. One of those teammates is Scott Sporting Goods. Scott Sporting Goods features an array of sporting equipment, including clothes and shoes. They are also the ones that fit our Fighting Indians broadcast team with the Fighting Indians apparel. Located in downtown Vero Beach, 1407 20th Street. Their phone number is 778-0661. Thanks to Scott Sporting Goods. A septic system is only as good as the installation and maintenance. Reliable Septic is the name known along the coast for being the professionals who install and service these systems for both residential and commercial uses. They'll determine the on-site needs and design considerations for a complete wastewater treatment system. Thanks to Reliable Septic Service. 772-562-4242. More Countdown to Kickoff by Caps Pizza and Pub. Coach Jankowski, along with Paul Tipton. Coach, uh, Matt talked to you about the field, and he talked to you about you know some of the, the preseason, offseason things that have been going on. Last week, we got a chance to do our, our first official kind of scrimmage, if you will, against uh, another opponent, our kickoff classic against Dwyer. 49-0 win. You put up uh, 316 uh, yards of offense. Uh, but tell me your thoughts on that game. How did you like, I mean, obviously the kids getting their first time on that particular turf. Uh, overall, what's your thoughts of that game and how it went for you guys? Yeah, it was our first time to go against uh, another opponent, first time on the turf. Um, I think to start with, you you, you, you know, you got to look at the defense, and, and I thought that we ran around pretty well. Uh, you know, obviously holding them to a shutout is, is speaks for itself, but just um, just really proud of the way our guys, you know, played. I think we, you know, played a bunch of guys, had a, had a nice rotation going. Um, I felt like, you know, there was a lot of effort on that side of the ball. Um, always some things, you know, and talking to, to Coach Mata, you know, afterwards and, and uh, you know, in our in our staff meetings, you know, that weekend is, is, you know, there's always things that we need to clean up, need to clean up our tackling, got to tackle better. Um, you know, just, just some alignment, you know, issues from, from, you know, uh, but, but from a first game, first time against another opponent, you really don't know a whole lot on how they're going to come out and what they're going to come out in and what their st- offensive strategy is going to be. So I was, I was very pleased with the way our defense played. And, and then, um, you know, just as a whole, even though there was some slop and even there, even though that we had made some mistakes and, and, and really in all three phases, uh, you know, the penalties were, were, were apparent, uh, had a couple turnovers. I think that most of what happened in that game happened uh, with hustle. And, and so when, it, when you're making hustle plays and, and even when, it, when there are mistakes, um, we talk about making mistakes going full speed. I felt like the majority of that was the case. There were some, you know, uh, I, I, I like to use other s- sports to, to use that comparison and analogy, you know, like some unforced errors that, that we had. You know, if we were talking about tennis, that's that's always a, a big statistic. And, and I felt like we had some unforced errors, you know, a couple of guys that – forgot to put their mouthpiece in or we got lined up wrong or we had a motion penalty or we, you know, some things along those lines, even, even the roughing the punter in, in some ways, you know, you could, you could probably lump that into both categories. We were hustling, but yet it was, it was somewhat of an unforced error because we didn't get blocked into him. We took a bad angle. We didn't, you know, but all those things, um, I think if, if we handle them correctly, uh, you, you learn, you know, uh, sometimes what to do and then what not to do. And, and uh, hopefully we're a better team because of those experiences, you know, this week. 
Tyler now in his second year, Tyler Aronson, our quarterback in his second year under this system. And uh, boy, does he just, he looks so comfortable out there on the field. He much better than he was last year. I felt like, you know, and you, I think even talked about this, that like when you come in late, you're so much catch up you've got to do. And now he seems really on track and looks very comfortable out there. I mean, Tyler is a, is a talent as we've talked about on, on many of our shows and, and, uh, but I think, you know, this year is it's very apparent of the work that he's put in, you know, from, you know, you go all the way back to last season and and uh, then, you know, uh, he, he ends up with an unfortunate injury that that, you know, you know, forces him out for the, the remainder of the season. I think it happened. The injury happened in game eight or nine and. He missed, you know, all the way through the regional finals, and and uh, but but he was always he remained a student of the game. He remained remained um, you know active with the team and involved, and and uh, so that carried over into the off season. And and, and Tyler had a great off season. He he had a great off season as far as you know continuing to study the offense. Uh, continuing to study defensive tendencies. He's a very good student of the game. He's He's got a very high football IQ. He's a lot of fun to coach because of those reasons, you know. And then, and then you know, you, you, you marry that or mesh that with his talent and his arm talent and, and his ability to, to, to play the position. Um, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of fun, and, and he can do a lot of things. He can make every throw. He's, he's like you said, he, the, the comfort is, is, is very obvious. It's, it's obvious to me and probably everybody that watches him. And, and uh, I think, he, you know, we'll continue to see that and hope to continue to see that week in and week out. Tuesday at Coach's Corner, we talked about this, the, the balance on the offense uh, was, I think, 177 through the air and 139 on the ground. Um, scored both throwing and running the ball. It was uh, – it seemed like a very well balanced offense. When you've got a lot of weapons like that, coach, I'm sure for a coach that's as creative like you on the offensive side, it's a lot of fun to try to work on some some plays and, and uh, figure out how to make it a nightmare for a lot of defenses. We do. We have some some fun guys to work with. I always, you know, enjoy uh, the preparation part of of getting ready for a Friday night and and uh, to have you know the type of players that we have, not just with ability but with work ethic and with with, uh, you know, football IQ and and being able to put all that together is it, it's a lot of fun. You know, we uh, we don't try to reinvent the wheel or or uh, you know outdo ourselves. Um, I think you know, no matter how creative you want to be or or uh, how you know exotic you want to be on offense or defense, I think it's still going to come down to you know those fundamentals that we talk about, and it's it sounds very boring, but you know we still are going to have to block, we're still going to have to tackle and do all those things that really matter when when uh, you know you break this thing down and, and outcomes are decided. Well, the outcome was a 49-0 to win in Week 0. Now we turn to Week 1, and it's going to be a good one. Miami Northwestern coming to the Citrus Bowl tonight. We'll talk about that game when we come back. Hi, J.W. from Barker Air Conditioning. These hot and humid days sure do take a toll on your air conditioning system. Barker Air Conditioning offers our ESA annual or semi-annual maintenance plan to keep things in good working order. Barker Air Conditioning, servicing Indian River County since 1959. Christian FM thanks Paris Family Chiropractic for their support. Dr. Matt Paris is a longtime resident of Vero Beach and a former quarterback for the Fighting Indians. Just like our Fighting Indians work hard for the win, Dr. Paris works hard for a patient's well-being. From proper alignment to good nutrition, Dr. Paris helps patients achieve the win. Paris Family Chiropractic, when the spine is in line, everything is fine. 299-4649 or parisfamilychiro.com. More Countdown to Kickoff by Caps Pizza and Pub. Welcome back. We're counting down to kickoff. Week number one is here, folks. It's official. The new season gets started tonight with Miami Northwestern here at the Citrus Bowl. I'm Paul Tipton, joined by our head coach, Lenny Jankowski. Coach, Miami Northwestern. Very well-known program. They've they've been in the headlines a lot through the years. Um, in fact, I think they're like compared to like number eight. I think is one of the most dominant programs in the state of Florida. When Max Preps put a list together recently, they're ranked again nationally. Their preseason game, though, they played Chaminade, a very good team. 
Chaminade you know, gives them a loss in that preseason game. So with all that said, tell me what you know about the Miami Northwestern Bulls. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you gave a, a great preview there, and, and uh, they are a very storied program. Uh, some additional, you know, comments. Uh, they, they are uh, with, with a, a first-year coach, and, and uh, you know, he's, he's been coaching in, in Dade County for a while. This is his first head coaching job, and uh, he's a very uh, storied player there, you know, very well-known um, in Dade County and has a great reputation, so I'm, I'm sure that he's going to uh, continue that tradition. And, and, and probably build his own legacy there, um, but but I had an opportunity to go down and watch their their kickoff classic against Chaminade, and and uh, it is always very difficult to get a gauge from a game that doesn't count on the record books, you know, and and so you know what are what are teams showing? What are they holding back? Um, I think that there was, uh, you know, the, the one thing that was very apparent is there was a ton of talent on that field on both sides. Uh, Miami Northwestern, you know, to, to, to just kind of stick to that uh, theme because that those, are, you know, that is our opponent. Um, they're, you know, very athletic, um, as fast of a team that, that we'll ever line up against. I mean, they're, they're going to have all kind of team speed in, in, in all departments, in all categories, all three phases. Uh, they've got, uh, you know, some guys that rotate in, so they see, they appear to be very deep, um, again, especially at the skill position. Uh, they've got a, bi- a big-time quarterback who, you know, has got all kind of uh, national rankings himself. I um, think he's committed to UAB and, and uh, has been at a couple different schools down there, but uh, we had a chance to see him his freshman year, the quarterback, uh, when he was at another school in, in a seven-on-seven tournament. We came came away very impressed. Uh, so I know that he's he's ultra talented. They've got a couple big-time receivers. Um, number one is is going to you know get everybody's attention. He's six foot five and can run and jump and do all those things. Not only will he get you know our coaches, our fans, our players you know attention, but he's got the attention of all the you know the big time programs in the country. With with you know one, he's one of those guys with a, a ton of offers. Um, but they've got all kind of pieces and parts in between, and and uh, a bunch of weapons that they get the ball to on offense. Guys that run around uh, really well on defense. Uh, so yeah, they did come up short against Chaminade, but as you mentioned, um, Chaminade is you know one of the top two or three teams in the country, and and uh, uh, like I said, being at that game, although the final score ends up looking like it's a little bit lopsided, you know when you watch the flow of the game, there were just some things that happened here or there, and and uh, you know. Uh, caused Miami Northwestern to come up short, but I, I really don't think that's going to have a whole, you know, a, a, a huge outcome on their not just this game, but their season as a whole. Um, they're they're very talented and will be a force to be reckoned with. Coach, coming off a win like you did last week, forty nine to zero, certainly it's a nice confidence builder. How do you channel that in the right direction so that you, you don't get overconfident going into a game like this? Well, I think each week the goal has to be to get better, and, and you know we try to even break it down a little more into not just you know get better each week and and that's you know obviously very cliche-ish but to try to improve each day you know and and uh, regardless of who our opponent is and and you know we've got to be better tomorrow than we were today and you know and and live by that understand that this is a process I mean we're just getting started here you know and this is a a long season so this is a big test for us tonight and uh, you know we I I feel like we've had a great practice I think our, our kids were focused uh, each and every week is always going to be a different challenge. It's challenges. Be, the, the challenges are because of uh, the personnel that you're you're playing against. The scheme is always different. So really, you, you know, in a sense, when when you put the 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 game that was just played to bed, it, it's a whole. You know, the, the process begins again. You know, and starts again. And so, I think we've got a. You know, as as diverse of a team as we have from you know the youth the uh the the, t- the the talent that we have that you know from our younger classes to the experience that we have with some of our older guys i think it has gelled uh, very well today i like our team chemistry and uh and i think just you know that 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 leadership that ha- that we're starting to see within our team uh you know uh, allows us to have these practices that we're having where we feel like we're getting a lot accomplished and a lot done Well, Coach, appreciate the time. As always, we'll let you get to your boys and get set for tonight's kickoff against Miami Northwestern. We'll step aside. we got more Countdown to Kickoff coming up right after this. Hi, Derek West here from the Genesis Church Riviera Beach. We are proud supporters 
of Fighting Indians Football and Vera Beach Athletics. We invite you to join us this Sunday at 9.15 for our services. If you can't join us in person, please visit us online at gcvero.com. Genesis Church of Vera Beach, place of love where honest men are known and unafraid to love the hardest heart of stone. Visit us at gcvero.com. Cafe 66, located on US 1, just south of 8th Street. At Cafe 66, our breakfast menu is all about variety. From biscuits and gravy, to country fried steak and eggs, to Nutella stuffed French toast. Our lunch and dinner menus have something for everyone. From barbecue platters to unique burgers. Our hours online at cafe66vero.com. We proudly support the Fighting Indians. Christian FM can put this game on the radio thanks to the support of businesses like Chuck Bateman State Farm Insurance in Vero Beach. Chuck's goal is to create an atmosphere where customers can talk about what's important to them. He's also a huge supporter of our local chapter of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Chuck's phone is 567-1106 or chuckbatemaninsurance.com. Caps Pizza and Pub, a proud sponsor of the Botting Indians and Christian FM, serving Vero for over 35 years. Caps offers Italian cuisine, including pizza, strombolis, calzones, hot and cold subs, plus wings. A family-owned and operated business, John and his staff are happy to serve. Caps Pizza and Pub, 725 27th Avenue Southwest, Vero Beach, 772-770-2277 or CapsPizzaMenu.com. More Countdown to Kickoff by Caps Pizza and Pub. Well, welcome back as we get set for week one. It's Miami Northwestern coming to the Citrus Bowl to take on your own Vero Beach Fighting Indians. Everybody now, zero and zero. The 2023 season is about to get set. Paul Tiffin along with Gary Parrish, and welcome to our broadcast booth brought to you by Joey's Downtown Dapper and Dipper Shops, respectively. Gary, uh, you know, before we get into the X's and O's of, of tonight's game and, and our opponent and everything like that, I would be remiss if we didn't take some time and talk about our, our good friend and buddy, our sideline guru that was uh, with us for so many years, Ronnie Self, that uh, unfortunately passed away earlier this year. And uh, it's it's such a loss for this whole community, but especially for this broadcast team. Is, uh, he was such a fun guy to have as part of our crew. Yeah, we go back. Uh, Ronnie probably did 34, 35 years with us and. uh as our sideline reporter and uh, did a heck of a job, did the little things that, you know, some guys just wouldn't do. And he was a tremendous fan. He loved the fighting Indians. Uh, They were his team. And and he was probably not only a sideline reporter, but he was probably the biggest fan out there on the field in that whole stadium, no matter where we were on the road or at home, his love for the Indians is second to nobody. And, uh, He's going to be dearly missed. I, 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 uh, when we go to Caps, uh, you know, Ronnie yeah. would be there to help us and yeah. uh, set up and break down. And um, it's, it, it's funny not having Ronnie here, but um, Ronnie gave us a lot in life. He gave us a uh, – He did. He taught us about what it is to be a, a, a dedicated, loyal person. He taught us how to love. He taught us how to uh, laugh. He taught us uh, – uh, some of his corny jokes and some of his uh, uh, stu- sometimes his sayings were, you yeah, know, yeah. you and I would look at each other. And uh, <laughs> but you know what? We we learned a lot from Ronnie, and um, I know Ronnie's in a better place. And uh, I know his family. Uh, we all miss him, but uh, we can't wait to be there one day with him. He's yeah. always near and dear to our heart, and this is what these uh, these buttons are a good reminder of our, our good fronty, our good buddy Ronnie Self. And so, with that, let's turn our attention now to tonight's game. Now, Miami Northwestern. We'll talk about them in just a little bit, but let's recap from last week, Week Zero, our preseason matchup against Dwyer. It's a 49 to zero win. We put up about 316 yards of total offense. What did we learn about our offense? Well, I think we learned that we can bounce back after. Having two touchdowns brought back early in the game, like in the very first series, we had yep. a, a penalty that cost us a touchdown. We left points out there on the field, and that we were able to overcome close to 100 yards of penalties in that game. Our defense played an outstanding game. Offense came alive. Doesn't matter whether you wanted to throw the ball, if you wanted to run the ball. We saw the talent. Our offensive line did a good job. Receivers made some great catches. Running backs were fantastic. 
and everybody on defense was able to contribute. It was a solid win, and you say to yourself, okay, well, Dwyer was probably an off year for them. Could be. Okay, yeah. well, that's what you got to think because normally Dwyer – is one of those teams that have won a couple state championships and and they're a pretty good competitive team and and, and again they just they looked a little bit off their game Vero Beach on the other on the other part of the side of the coin on this is that I thought Vero looked outstanding at times I thought they had depth I thought they had a lot of talent out there and uh, a lot of kids got to play and and it was an impressive win Anytime you beat an opponent 49 to nothing and you left points on the field, it's a pretty good night. Well, speaking of points, there were no points for Dwyer. Uh, it was like 100 yards, I mean 102 yards of total offense on the night for Dwyer. So defensively speaking, Vero Beach, outstanding play. Oh, they did. They played an outstanding game. I mean, and it's going to take everything they played last week and a lot more this week against this team. But they did exactly what they had to do. It was Bill... Mata, his defensive team, put pressure at times. He didn't. He kind of played a vanilla and wouldn't allow, you know, a lot of stunts or a lot of blitzes and all. But he, he, his, his one thing that I was impressed with was the athleticism of his team as they were able to go lateral on the field. They go from side to side. They could drop back deep, and uh, and then they put a lot of pressure up front. Absolutely did. All right. Well, that was week zero. We're going to take a break. We'll come back and talk about week number one. It's Miami Northwestern coming here to the Citrus Bowl tonight to start the season off for the Vero Beach Fighting Indians. We'll be back with more countdown to kickoff right after this. Hi, JW from Barker Air Conditioning. These hot and humid days sure do take a toll on your air conditioning system. Barker Air Conditioning offers our ESA annual or semi-annual maintenance plan to keep things in good working order. Barker Air Conditioning, servicing Indian River County since 1959. Caps Pizza and Pub, a proud sponsor of the Botting Indians and Christian FM, serving Vero for over 35 years. Caps offers Italian cuisine, including pizza, strombolis, calzones, hot and cold subs, plus wings. A family-owned and operated business, John and his staff are happy to serve. Caps Pizza and Pub, 725 27th Avenue Southwest, Vero Beach, 772-770-2277 or CapsPizzaMenu.com. Molinary Pools is a proud supporter of Fighting Indians Football and Christian FM. A family-owned and operated business, the Molinari family, longtime members of this community. Joel Molinari, a former Fighting Indian, loves serving the Treasure Coast residents from pool cleaning to repairs to pool remodeling. Molinari Pools. Love people. Love pools. 772-778-2633 or MolinariPools.com. More countdown to kickoff by Caps Pizza and Pub. Well, here we go with week number one of high school football. Your Vero Beach Fighting Indians host tonight, and they will be hosting Miami Northwestern, the Bulls. Bulls coming in. They've got a lot of notoriety. They've won, I believe, what, some seven state championships in the course of their school? Yeah, seven state champions, and they've been runner-up twice. And so out of their, uh, since the... In the 90s, mid-90s on up, they've had a, a, a stellar uh, program down there. They're ranked in the top 25 nationally right now. Uh, they played last week for their preseason game. They played Madonna Chaminade. And I'm going to tell you, Madonna Chaminade is a very good program. Possibly, could arguably be the top con uh, team in the country. That's how good they are. They beat Miami Northwestern 35-6. to Now, Coach Jay went to that game. He talked a little bit about that. that he said, yeah, the score looks a little lopsided, he said, but it was actually a lot closer than what the score indicated. So, Gary, you and I watched a little bit of film on the Bulls. What do you see? Oh, I think Bulls are fast. I think they they got some athletes on their uh, team. They are very athletic. Uh, they're, just, they're a quality team that just got a hold of a team that was probably – a little more talented than they were the uh, last week. And as you and I saw, we saw they had some drop balls. They had some penalties. They had some things that made the game would have probably been a little closer. But, no, you can't take it away from uh, Shamanon. They just absolutely just pounded them. They did. So it starts here with their quarterback, Adrian Posey. Yep. He is a commit to UAB. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he's got some talented receivers, but they're young. 
you know, got Calvin Russell, uh, Nicholas Lanier, and Trav uh, Travel Mathis. They're all, you know, sophomores to maybe juniors. And, you know, so he's got some young talent, but they're extremely talented. They're kind of like a kid we have, E.J. White. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're that kind of caliber type of a kid. I don't know how they're. I don't know if they're as tall as. Uh, I don't think any of them are as tall as EJ, and as probably is EJ may be just a hair faster. But with with Posey, their quarterback, he's a three-star quarterback that has committed to UAB, and I and 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 he's a good athlete. He's a tall kid, six foot two, weighs two hundred and twenty some odd pounds. He'll be able to run the ball, Paul. He'll be able to handle. We got to put pressure on him. Take him out of his disrupt his timing and uh, try to, you know, make some big plays with our defense. Now, their defense is pretty stacked as well, so that offensive line's got a challenge tonight against these Bulls. Yeah, you're going to see that. They're going to come up. They're very – they always feel – a Miami team comes in, and uh, they always feel like they got better athletes. They feel like they got more speed. They're more physical. They intimidate you. Last time we played a Miami team was at Palmetto when we, mm -hmm. we lost 10-7 to 7 to them. But they were a, a factor. They really intended, They really played good. It was a great game. You had two teams going at each other. But that's a typical Miami-type game down there, physical, very athletic. What do you expect to see from Vero? Or I should say more specifically, what do you feel like are keys for Vero tonight? I think keys will be is the give Tyler an opportunity to throw the ball downfield. Allow him, if he can get the ball downfield, that's going to open up the running lanes, and you've got Osby and you, you've got Hillsman. They're, they're going to just be able to pound up in there, and they're pretty good athletes we saw last week. So one of the ways you help them is be able to go vertical, be able to take the, get the linebackers and the safeties from studying coming up and doing run support and trying to tackle plays like that. you got to get them to set back a little bit, and then you opens up your running game. And I think if we can do that, we'll have a great success tonight. Boy, if we get a win tonight, boy, the, I tell you, the, the buzz around uh, the football world will be unbelievable. We're getting set for the kickoff tonight for Vero Beach and Miami to open up the season here at the Citrus Bowl. We're just about, oh, 15, 20 minutes away from that kickoff. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll check in with the guys down on the sideline. It's countdown to kickoff right here at your Christian FM. Cafe 66, located on US 1, just south of 8th Street. At Cafe 66, our breakfast menu is all about variety. From biscuits and gravy, to country fried steak and eggs, to Nutella stuffed French toast. Our lunch and dinner menus have something for everyone. From barbecue platters, to unique burgers. Our hours online at cafe 66 vero.com. We proudly support the Fighting Indians. Smart, stylish, fly, these are the words of Dapper. Joey's Downtown Dapper, a barber shop that provides more than haircuts. They provide a fun experience with a local flavor. Owner Joey Lucchini is a lifelong resident of Vero Beach, loves supporting local charities, youth sports, and fighting Indians football. Joey's Downtown Dapper, 2005 14th Avenue, downtown Vero Beach, a supporter of Christian FM. Molinary Pools is a proud supporter of Fighting Indians Football and Christian FM. A family-owned and operated business, the Molinari family, longtime members of this community. Joel Molinari, a former Fighting Indian, loves serving the Treasure Coast residents from pool cleaning to repairs to pool remodeling. Molinari Pools. Love people. Love pools. 772-778-2633 or MolinariPools.com. More Countdown to Kickoff by Caps Pizza and Pub. Welcome back. Citrus Bowl, Billy Livingsfields, where we are tonight. We're kicking off week number one. It's the season opener for Vero Beach, and they are hosting Miami Northwestern. Well, you've heard from Gary about what he feels like are the keys, and uh, we're going to go down to the sideline, check the pulse down there. And tonight, filling in for Matt Paris is Derek West. He'll be monitoring the offensive unit tonight. All right, DW, what do you hear down there? Well, guys, what a beautiful night for football, considering the, the weather last week. Uh, this week, I really thought all along uh, that our keys to our success tonight, number one, is going to be on first down. If you looked at us last week, as we scored, we were very good on first down on most of those drives. And I feel like if we can stay first down, we can stay ahead of schedule, we can really score some points tonight. Another thing that I'm looking for is uh, the third quarter, how well we run the ball. And I don't know 
about you guys, but I absolutely love seeing two human sledgehammers running the ball in the third quarter. And if we can be successful in the third quarter running the ball, I really like our chances tonight, guys. All right, DW, I appreciate that. Let's turn our attention over to the defensive unit who's coming off a, a shutout, shutout in the uh, preseason opener. G.T. Paris is going to be monitoring that defensive unit led by Coach Mata. G., what do you hear? Well, with the defensive side tonight, you know, you, you, you've got a team that's out there with a lot of speed, a lot of athleticism. So you've only had one little game maybe to watch. Uh, you know, and as we know, a lot of times preseason or this is vanilla, so you don't know how much you're able to get from that. But what you do know is you're going to have a team out there that's going to be running from side to side 100 miles per hour. So what do you do to combat that? You have to be disciplined. You have to be in every spot. All your calls have to be made, and you have to make tackles. We, we you know, you've heard Bill talk about this, and we've, we've seen it. He goes, it starts with the basics. If you can't tackle, I need somebody else to step on the field. And with a team that has a lot of speed, a lot of athleticism, look for broken plays. Look for a team that's going to come out and try to do that. They might try to run a lot of reverses or gadgets and stuff, but it really comes down to basics. It's all just to get you off your rhythm. So look for us to play man up, go straight forward, and we've got to make tackles, clean up a little bit last week. It's hard to be like, oh, we, we didn't give up any points, but you can always find something. And Bill said he's going to go out tonight, and that's their goal is to clean up a little bit of, uh, of the missed tackles. But tonight we have to be 100% in rhythm, and all of our checks and all of our spots have to be spot on. GT, uh, last week we had to deal with some, some thunder showers rolling before the game and through the first quarter. What's the situation down there this week? Oh, my gosh. I, 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 it couldn't be any more beautiful as a football weather. You know, we've been dealing the last you know several weeks in Florida. It's been 95, 98, 100 on the field, 105. Tonight is absolutely gorgeous. A little bit of breeze, but not enough to where it's going to affect the game, I say. But it, it's actually going to keep it uh, where these guys are not dying of heat. So as far as the field and the night, it is absolutely Beautiful for some football weather tonight. We're super excited. I can't wait to see these two teams. You got a powerhouse, a history of football. You can't let that bother you tonight. So I'm excited to see which team comes out and puts the big first hits on them. All right. GT Paris, Derek West will be roaming those sidelines tonight for us as we go through this game, and we're not too far away from that kickoff. We're going to step aside. When we come back, we're going to get to know our quarterback, Tyler Aronson, and a little bit later, Bobby Paris is here for her first episode of Women of the Fighting Indians. It's Countdown to Kickoff here at your Christian FM. Hi, JW from Barker Air Conditioning. These hot and humid days sure do take a toll on your air conditioning system. Barker Air Conditioning offers our ESA annual or semi-annual maintenance plans to keep things in good working order. Barker Air Conditioning, servicing Indian River County since 1959. The Fighting Indians rely on teamwork, and so does Christian FM. One of those teammates is Scott Sporting Goods. Scott Sporting Goods features an array of sporting equipment, including clothes and shoes. They are also the ones that fit our Fighting Indians broadcast team with the Fighting Indians apparel. Located in downtown Vero Beach, 1407 20th Street. Their phone number is 778-0661. Thanks to Scott Sporting Goods. Hi, Derek West here from the Genesis Church of Vero Beach. We are proud supporters of Fighting Indians football and Vera Beach Athletics. We invite you to join us this Sunday at 9.15 for our services. If you can't join us in person, please visit us online at gcvero.com. Genesis Church of Vera Beach, place of love where honest men are known and unafraid to love the hardest hardest home. Visit us at gcvero.com. Welcome back to Countdown to Kickoff on the Vero Nation Network. Time to get to know your Indians. We're with our quarterback, uh, Tyler Aronson. And Tyler, coming into your senior year, man, and another uh, time to be here at Vero Beach. Last year, you came in as a junior. Um, you came in, you know, kind of almost behind the eight ball a little bit, trying to catch up. Um, and then you had a, you got off to a great start, had that little bugaboo there with the, with the broken thumb uh, late in the season. I guess everybody wants to know, how's the hand? How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling good for sure. Um, I'm as ready as I've ever been. I'm super excited to get after it against another opponent tomorrow. Um, this is truly a special group of guys, and I'm super excited to be able to spend my last year of uh, 
high school with them and be alongside such a special group. You put up some pretty good numbers last year. Now you've got a, a, a whole new receiving crew, and you're a senior, so you expect it as a quarterback especially to be the leader on the field and maybe even off the field as well. So what steps are you taking to try to fill that leadership role this year? Just, I mean, it starts with being able to have relationships with them off the field, um, I feel like, because then on uh, Friday nights, you really want to play for each other. You have real relationships. Um, and it's, it truly is bigger than football. Um, we're constantly talking about stuff, whether it's on and off the field. And um, um, we're all un unselfish, I would say. Um, we want to play for each other, and we're successful because of that. So. It's been no secret. You, you came in here with a, a, a big interest at SMU. You made your verbal commitment to SMU. Um, what is it about that school that you like, and why was that your choice? Um, just to start off with, um, I love Coach Lashley. Ever since I first met him when he was the offensive coordinator at the University of Miami, I really liked him. Um, obviously, he's a great coach, but off the field, too. Um, he spent a lot of time with my family and even my siblings and stuff like that. Um, you could tell that he truly prioritizes more than just football, but having true relationships with his quarterbacks. and players um, off the field as well and when he got the head coaching job at SMU I got on campus the first time and it felt right and I just wanted to make sure of that so the second time as well it felt just as good if not better and it felt like home so I was ready to commit and um, everything about it's awesome the city um, the support and the state of Texas and obviously it's in Dallas which is an awesome city um, for football but also just people and um, coaches even coach Brewer their quarterback coach um, he's developed some very good quarterbacks, and I think they do a good job on a daily basis. So I'm excited to be able to play for a guy like Coach Lash and Coach Brewer. Well, you can definitely tell he's done his homework about this school and who's there. So good job, my friend. Um, you mentioned about your family. Tell me a little bit about your family. Let us, let us get to know them. Um, my mom, Danielle, is a kindergarten teacher, and um, my dad, Brandon, sells preschools. Got any uh, siblings? I do. I have a younger brother and a younger sister. My brother's name is Parker, and he's 11. And my sister's name is Leah, and she's 14. She just started um, her first year of high school. And then my brother's starting middle school this year. So. Oh, nice, nice. You probably don't get a lot of downtime, but when you do get some free time, what's fun time for you? Um, I like spending time with my family. Uh, if it's not, I won't include training as... Uh, what I like to do in my free time is that's still playing league football, but I like to, I like watching UFC, stuff like that with my family. Um, I like hanging out with my friends. Um, I like to go look for clothes and shoes and stuff like that too, but that's really it, just little things like that. So if you were going to add a UFC name to Tyler Aronson, what's that going to be? Is it like Mad Dog or something? <sighs> that's a good question. I think, I think we could go with Mad Dog. There you go. That's going to be your new nickname now. It's going to be Mad Dog. Um, so we're getting ready for this season. Um, when you look back at last year, in spite of the injury and all, you know, just watch film and that, what are the things that you you are working on to get better and be prepared for this year? I think everything. Um, I'm definitely not satisfied with anything from last year. Um, there's plenty of stuff that um, I've been working on to improve, and um, obviously it didn't end the way any of us wanted and that's our goal for this year but just on a personal level I've been focusing on becoming a better leader and just little things um, on the field and off the field being able to be a good role model to some of the underclassmen because I remember how it was when I was younger and how um, important it is to have an older guy being able to teach you the, the right way to do things from uh, when you first step on campus so all right there, folks. That's Tyler Aronson, our starting quarterback for the 2023 season. Tyler, we wish you the best of luck this year. Thank you. Nice talking to you. Cafe 66, located on US-1, just south of 8th Street. At Cafe 66, our breakfast menu is all about variety. From biscuits and gravy, to country fried steak and eggs, to Nutella stuffed French toast. Our lunch and dinner menus have something for everyone. From barbecue platters to unique burgers. Our hours online at cafe66vero.com. We proudly support the Fighting Indians. Thanks to Roy Bell Grading Services for sponsoring Fighting Indians football and the Fighting Indians post-game show. Hi, my name is Chase Bell, and my father Roy has served Indian River County in the grading industry for over 40 years. 
My family and I are proud supporters of Christian FM and the Vero Beach Fighting Indians. Go Vero! No job too small or too big. Roy Bell Grading Services. We roll the earth. 772 473 Four five five nine. Roy Bell Grading Services. Ohana Water Systems is proud to partner with Christian FM. Hi, I'm Mikey, owner of Ohana Water Systems. We've created a technology that takes city and even well water and turn it into drinkable, pH balanced, remineralized alkaline water throughout the entire house. Our system also protects the plumbing and appliances from hard water damage. No obligation consultations and water testing available. Online at OhanaWaterSystems.com. Hi, JW from Barker Air Conditioning. These hot and humid days sure do take a toll on your air conditioning system. Barker Air Conditioning offers our ESA annual or semi-annual maintenance plans to keep things in good working order. Barker Air Conditioning, servicing Indian River County since 1959. WSCF Vero Beach. Christian FM. Sports presents Fighting Indians Football. Here's the voice of the Fighting Indians, Paul Tipton. Live from the Citrus Bowl in Billy Living's Field, week one of high school football matches the Miami Northwestern Bulls and your Vero Beach Fighting Indians. Coach Harris, in his first season with the Bulls, has a very talented but young team, but it's anchored by Adrian Posey, the senior quarterback committed to UAB, stands tall in the park pocket at 6'5", and has a strong arm. The defense will be tested with a group of talented receivers. Coach Jay has one of the most talented teams in recent program history. There's been a buzz in camp that this year could be super special, and it starts with a big test tonight. The Friday night lights are on, and it is game time. Hey, Vero Nation, Paul Tipton, along with the legendary Gary Paris, we welcome you to Fighting Indians Football. Proud to bring you our 27th season of Indians football, and it is presented by Cafe 66. Both teams played their preseason matchup last week. Vero Beach wins it 49-0 over Dwyer. Miami Northwestern loses their preseason matchup 35-6 to a very talented Chaminade team. But make no mistake, folks, this Miami Northwestern team is the real deal. And this, Gary Paris, is an unbelievable test to start the season. You know, I don't think I've ever broadcasted a game where I've the team we're playing has won seven state championships and two runner-ups in the last uh, 20 years. This is a outstanding program, a stellar program. What a great challenge to kick off our season now as we go to games count and we play one of the best teams in the state of Florida. Miami West Northwestern is going to kick off to Vero Beach as both teams get set up on their respective side of the field. Northwestern's wearing white uniforms tonight, pants, shirts with some yellow numbers and yellow helmets. Got trimmed out in blue. Vero tonight wearing the black pants and jerseys with their red helmets and the white numbers, or gray numbers, I should say. And we're about ready to get this game underway and can officially start the 2023 season. Bulls getting lined up. As Aller, the kicker, gets set, just waiting for the official to give him the signal. And there it is. And the season is underway for 2023. And it'll be a touchback as it's kicked about two yards into the end zone. And so Vero Beach will bring their offensive unit out to get this game underway, led by Tyler Aronson. Last year, he threw for 1,683 yards, 21 touchdowns, and seven interceptions before he had the injury in week eight against Martin County. 
Jonathan Hillsman, Octavian Osby will be in the backfield. Up front, the protection will be Thomas, Stevens, Hall, Santos, Smith. Receivers, Isaiah Roberts, Dwayne Simon, E.J. White, and Jarvis Jacobs. As we get set from the 20. And already the official's going to stop things with a little bit of a sideline warning. Immediately we see Northwestern come right out in press coverage. That's what Coach Jay talked to us about on Tuesday night. At Caps, when we need Coach's Corner, they play a lot of press coverage. Indians will set up with three receivers to the left side, a single on the right, and one back in the backfield is Jonathan Hillsman. And a little jump by Northwestern. It's going to give Vero Beach a first down and five instead of a first and ten. Yeah, a little encroachment there. Again, trying to get a good jump. You see how quick they're trying to get off the ball, but you got to be disciplined enough to watch the ball. So at the 25, where it's first and five. Aronson, he's looking to throw. He's looking to go. He's got a wide open receiver, caught at the 50. Torres is out of bounds around the 30-yard line and a big play for Vero Beach. It's Eddie Torres getting a start. Ran a little wheel route. Eddie was one of the inside receivers. He goes outside Jarvis. Jarvis does a great job, Jacobs, of making that little bit of a block there a little bit of a rub, and he was able to get outside Torres to get a big play. Picks up 45 on that catch. Check out this formation with a bunch over on the left side. Screen goes to Roberts. Boy, and the speed, you see it there by Northwestern as they get there quickly. Yeah, there'll be a loss on that play, maybe of a yard if they didn't get back to the, yeah, no gain. But uh, again, a, a, a funny formation. Big Chase Stevens is out there. Two linemen, they had the receivers out there. No gain at all. Twins on either side. Second and 10. Now another penalty is going to come from the sideline of Miami Northwestern. That may be a sideline warning. I believe that's the second one they've already had. <laughs> We're just at 11 10. We haven't even gotten a full minute of this game in yet. And we've had a couple of, uh, I think, three penalties. And we've had a big 45 yard pass play. Hillsman in the backfield with Tyler Aronson. Jonathan will set up on the left side of Aronson for this one on first down, or excuse me, second down and 10 at the Bulls 30. Twin receivers. Now Roberts goes in motion to the right side. Aronson looking to go. Screen pass. Roberts open. And he drops it. Had it. Kind of bobbled it and then dropped it. He had some room. Might have got about five yards yeah, out of that. Yeah, and I think he could have got a little help there from his quarterback if he'd have gotten the ball up a little higher. Sure. He he ran across. He was in motion. Comes across. Guys went downfield. It was wide open on that drag across there. And he, if the quarterback could have got it just a little higher, it probably would have been a first down. Third down and 10 now for Vero Beach at the Bulls 30. Got no score. It's opening possession of the ball game. A shift. Now going to go a little tight here on the right side. Hillsman out of the backfield. Aarons has got time to throw. He's going to fire. He's got a wide open receiver. Torres in the end zone. He caught it. Touchdown. That might have been motion. Might have been motion. That might have been illegal motion by Vero Beach on that play. They had a lot of guys shuffling around. And uh, you've got to get your feet set on the thing. That's illegal shift. That, and again, I didn't think our inside receivers were quite set yet. And that I may be wrong, but that's that's when I threw the flag. I went, Dad gummit, I thought my first thought was that. How about the catch by Torres? Torres made a fantastic catch. Great throw. Great catch, but here we go again. Yeah. We, we saw this last week in our very first series. Now you're going to third, and you got to get 16 or so. Third and 15. 15. Yeah. 
Boy, you hate to give one Ooh, back against, yeah. against a team like this. All right. Third and 15 coming up at the 35. Aronson looking for Torres over the right side. He was flanked very well. That was not going to be a catch for much if he completes that one. It's incomplete. It's fourth down. I think what they were trying to do there, Paul, and just my spe spe speculation here is that if they could have got 8 to 10 yards, then on fourth down they may have gone for it again. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's going for it here. Oh, you might see that pooch kick he did true, last year. True, true. Yep. Could see Aronson draw back. On fourth and 15, it's an offensive play. Looking, fires, nobody there, and it's intercepted around the nine. Well, you lose your touchdown, you throw an interception on fourth down. Now, if you're going to have an interception, have it on fourth and long. You know what I mean? True. Because right. that ball probably, if you punt it, it would have gone into the end zone. You would have gotten it out at the 20-yard line, or they may have got a good, but better yeah, return. Yeah, you, you only gained 15 off of that. Yeah, yeah. like you, now you're going to start from about the 7 or 8-yard line, even though I felt like he, uh, he, he was looking for the deep slant, and it just wasn't there. All right, so we got the defense out now. Bacon, along with Montgomery and Perry up front. Alford, Rivers, and Pollock. Linebackers. Reynolds. Handoff's going to go off the right side. Gets to the 10 to the, about the 12. Good. Nice little cut back to the left by their running back. That allowed him to pick up about, uh, about three or four yards on that play. Yeah, that was Mathis on the carry for the Bulls. They'll give him about four on it, make it a second and six. Posey looking to pass, finds his receiver on the side, gets to almost the 20-yard line. That'll be enough for a Bulls first down. Yeah, that's a good job by the wide receiver out there. They had a, uh, they threw a guy in motion there, and he threw, got the pass out to him quick. And as you saw, the block by the wide receiver was a good block, allowed them to get the first down. So back on that first drive, a penalty hurts Vero again. Takes points off the board. Bureau comes up empty on that on that drive. First down and 10 for the Bulls. Adrian Posey, the quarterback, will have a three-receiver set. Receiver's going to go in motion. Gates the handoff off the left side, past the 20 to about the 22 or 3. Yeah, that's a little laser to the right, or excuse me, a little rocket pass. Shuffle to the right side that time. They bring a man in motion. He comes across. Quarterback just tosses it out in front to him, and he gets to the wide side, picks up about two or three yards. 9.44 and counting here first quarter. We've got no score. This is the first possession of the evening for Northwestern. This is a big defensive stand right here. Uh, you, you want to force them to have to pass the ball. Second and seven. At the 23, twin receivers on either side. Hand there off, it is. and it's a tackle for a loss, and Matt Bacon in the backfield. Matt Bacon shot that gap so hard, so quick, between the tackle and the guard. He lines up, heads up, shifted over, got in there, and he got so much penetration that time in the backfield that the back had nowhere to go. That's just a beautiful tackle for a loss. He'll lo loss a three on the play. Yeah, the six foot three, 210 senior shot through there like a, he was shot out of a cannon and made the tackle for a loss. Brings up third and 10 for the Bulls. They're going to go trips to the right side. Posey, he's looking to fire. And 2 2 Griffin's got the interception. He's at the 30. Trying to stay on his feet, tripped up. He's at the 25. 2-2 Two -two Griffin with the INT. I tell you what, great job of putting pressure on that quarterback to make him kind of hurry to that throw. Antoine Montgomery does a great job of getting around there and getting up in there, and a the quarterback felt the pressure, but 2-2 Two -two was right there. His eyes was on the quarterback. He read the quarterback. He was back in his zone. He jumped it and made an interception, and the Indians got excellent field position. So let's see what Vero Beach can dial up here now with an opportunity starting at the Bulls' 26. 
But the officials are going to stop play, and one of our receivers, Simmons, is going to have to come out of the game. So Jacobs will come in in his place. Yeah, that's those are those things, those knee pads or mouthpieces that you really get upset with yeah. with your 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 we've team. Been, yeah, and we've been told that's a point of emphasis here for the officials. So Vero's going to go trips to the left side. E.J. White, the one-on-one -on -one up top on the right. Handoff, Hillsman. Jonathan gets to the 25, pushes his way. Wow, shows some strength and almost to the 20. He got to near the 20, just right shy of the 20-yard line. That was the second effort. You just drove. He kept driving those legs of his, and he got his momentum going forward in it. Great effort by Jonathan. Five foot ten, 175 pound sophomore, able to pick up the yards there, five yards, and it's second and five. Aronson out of the pocket now, looking for some receivers. Now he's going to try to scramble it, gets to the 20, and down to about the 20, 19, 18 yard line. I think I see a flag over on the far side. If that's not one of those yellow marks, that will no. be a flag probably for holding against Northwestern. Let's see what the call is. Don't want to speculate, but I think that would be. It's going to be a hold against Northwestern. So there was a reason why Tyler had to scramble, because his receiver couldn't get open. Yeah, that was a uh, situation where, again, you, you feel like you're not in a good position as a defender, and you don't want your, your – the guy is scrambling back there, your quarterback. Mm -hmm. You don't want to lose him. When our guys made a move to go forward, he, he just grabbed his jersey and held him. Yeah. So the ball is spotted at the 19-yard line. They're still talking this over as far as where well, it's, it should be. Yeah. It, what it, about the, to the 10, I would think, right? Where's he going, the other way? or it, it goes back to the line of scrimmage and goes 10 yards forward. Well, the line of scrimmage is the 21, so yeah, it should so be it around should the be 11. Around the yeah, the 11. Yep, 11. Yeah. You're right. That's what I said. 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. Big and heavy right now. Aronson. Looked like there was movement. Octavius, he lost the ball. Scramble for it, and it's picked up by Northwestern. So, that's, again, that's, yeah. it's a little deja vu from last week. Penalty kills one drive and takes points off the board. A turnover on another drive stalls this one. Yeah, and that was, again, last week, Octavius had fumbled the ball in that drive, one of those drives there. He's just got to keep his arms, his ball t hard and tied up against his, his uh, uh, pads, and it won't, it won't pop out like that. So... There goes another good drive, as you said. It's deja vu all over again. All right, so Posey and the offensive unit back out on the field, and now we're going to give them five yards as we jumped across the line. And that's the quarterback did a good job. Posey on that did a hard bark, and uh, we saw Matt Bacon just jump. He was trying to get across there quick, and uh, you got to be disciplined. you got to watch the ball. Instead of first and ten, first and five, move the ball to the 21. Still no score with 7.27 to go first quarter. Northwestern will line up three receivers to the right. And a movement. And this is going to go against Vero. Vero lined up off sides. Here we go again. This is the third penalty, <laughs> I think, tonight for Vero Beach. And uh, it gives them a first down. Yeah. So just like that. They're at the 26. Here's the thing that's frustrating. It's just find the ball, keep, keep, get behind the ball, and watch the snap. So first and 10 at the 26. Handoff, and Bat Bacon catches him in the backfield. Another tackle for a loss, about a four-yard loss. 
I'm going to tell you right now, he was flying across there, Matt Bacon. Matt Bacon got the jump on that defensive tackle, and he was in the backfield. He almost got the handoff. Put it at about the 23-yard line. It'll be a second down and 13. 6.50 and counting, first quarter with no score. Two heavyweights to start the season. And whistle's oh. going to stop play. They're going to get another offsides on Vero. Offsides on Vero Beach. Now, you know something? You're, you're the coach, and you're looking over there. You almost feel that maybe this official is looking at it way too hard, and maybe his eyes need to be adjusted or so. But you know what I mean? It's, uh, but the, that's the third offsides we've had. In this series, I mean, yes, in this series, I mean, you, you, I don't understand how you can get. All right, so it went from a second and 13 to a second and eight. Posey looking to throw, pressure coming, trying to stay away, but he's going to go down. Pursuit by the black shirts was there, and Alford cleans it up. Yeah, I tell you what, great job by uh, McClintock, uh, excuse me, uh, McClinton who did a great job, Mark McClinton, Antoine Montgomery, and you saw the, uh, the, the, the quickness of Alfred, TJ, on that play. He just got, he was able to, those guys had him stop. He was able to wrap them up and throw them down. So brings up third and 10. Second. Or second and 10, I apologize. Posey looking to set up a screen, finds his receiver, but, boy, he had all kinds Fumble. of bad balls on the ground. They're going to say incomplete. Uh, they're going to call it an incomplete pass. So now it is now third down and ten for the Bulls. I have it at fourth, but I may be wrong. <laughs> yeah, but it is fourth down. You were right, Gary. I, I, I didn't say anything. I was just going by what I was seeing. <laughs> I back deep is Isaiah Roberts. Waiting for the punt. And it's Aller back there to set to punt the ball away. Low snap. Line drive punt. Going to take a bounce. Oh. Roberts touched it, but then it scrambled for the ball, and I think Vero got on top of it. Wow. Oof. Wow. Yeah, Vero Beach they're going to get it back. Boy, that well, was close. I, I tell you, I, you you got to be, again, you tell, your, you tell your return person, if you can't get it clean, let it go. All right. We've had a, a few series here. Let's go down, check in the sideline. GT, what you got? You know, guys up there, this is exactly what we thought. I talked to a couple of the offensive coaches. They're not showing us anything. What they do is they just basically line up man on man all the way across the front, and they out try to athletic you, and they try to beat you with speed. If it's not for a few mistakes we had, we would be controlling this game. But there's nothing we haven't seen that we didn't expect. First down and 10. For the Vero offense, we got no score. 540 to go in this first quarter. Twin receivers on either side. And it's going to be an offsides on Northwestern. And again, the problem there is the longer you take your count, those guys want to get across there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They're fired up. They want to get across. And again, you a good hard bark by the center before he snaps it is what happened there. So the ball will move to the 41-yard line. It'll be first and five. I believe they're taking a water break. And about time. 5.40 to go here in the first quarter with no score. We'll be back. This is Fighting Indians Football. Cafe 66, located on US-1, just south of 8th Street. At Cafe 66, our breakfast menu is all about variety. From biscuits and gravy to country fried steak and eggs, to Nutella stuffed French toast. Our lunch and dinner menus have something for everyone, from barbecue platters to unique burgers. Our hours are online at cafe66vero.com. We proudly support the Fighting Indians. 
This is Fighting Indians Football on the Bureau Nation Network. Brought to you by Molinari Pools. Let's join Gary Paris and the voice of the Fighting Indians, Paul Tipton. Welcome to the 2023 season. We're live at the Citrus Bowl in Billy Living's Field. Heavyweight battle taking place here for the season opener. Miami Northwestern here at the Citrus Bowl to take on Vero Beach. And so far, it has been back and forth, mostly because of mistakes. It's a 0-0 game, and on first and five, it's a handoff off the right side. Hill's been not really much there. Might have lost a yard or a no gain. Yeah, that was just a lot of, a lot of movement up front. Not, not a good surge by the offensive line on that play. Second and six coming for the Fighting Indians. That was Derek Williams that carried the ball. You're right, Gary. Twin receivers on either side. Aronson this time wants to throw. He's trying to set up a screen, and he just has to let it fly. And he got leveled. Well, he had E.J. Uh, e. White coming across. On a, on a crossing route there, he was wide open, but he did not have enough time. And I'm not sure EJ found the ball either on it looked like to me. Might not. He's going to, you know, on that pattern, you're probably looking back into the sun right now too. So it's now third down and six at the 40. And the Indians will line up. Four receivers, two on either side. And they'll take a quick check to the sideline. Aronson, he's looking to throw. Going on a go route down the sideline. Boy, there was a lot of contact and no flag. Wow. Seriously, and the Indian Vero Nation not happy. And Coach, Jan Coach Jankowski is about to throw the visor. So no flag means fourth down for Vero, and we'll probably see the first punt of the night, or second punt of the night. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a really, according to the guys, our, our guys on the sideline, said that it was a flagrant pull. They pulled his jersey off his shoulder pads. Yeah, Coach Jankowski's still hot about that, letting the official know about it. So... We'll get set as Wet Miller gets set for the punt for Vero. Taking a lot of time here. Well, they haven't started the uh, 40, uh, 25 second clock yet. So, all right, well, we got a second here. GT, let's go down to you. There's always a little bit of a rule of thumb when you're running down the sidelines on a go route and you get pulled and you come back and your jersey is off your shoulder and down by your elbow, typically that's a good sign that the D-back grabbed you and pulled you. They tried to show the referee, but he denied it. But as an old receiver, that was what I, he grabbed me, look at this. <laughs> Wet Miller gets the snap, gets the punt just away. Boy, he was pressured. Takes a good bounce and Vero Beach will down it at the 30 yard line. Snap was a little high, but he made, yeah. made got it to catch. He, there's a flag on the play. This may have been running into the kicker. Let's see what he says. Could be, yeah. There was some contact back there. Five-yard penalty running it's into the It's a five-yard, but you're at a fourth and six, Gary. I don't yeah. know. Do you think about going yeah, for it here? Heck, yeah. If you're Lenny Jankowski, you do. Or you just take the punt. They're going to come back off the field. They're going to take the penalty. Yeah, because this, this changes things a little bit as far as the decision goes. Because it goes down to a fourth and one if they mark this off as, a, as the, the penalty of running into the kicker. Uh, they still have not marked it off yet. There they go. Well, that's pretty close. So it's at the 45, yeah. I got a feeling yard. they're going to go for this, Gary. I would, if if they got their big guy in there and he holds on the ball here, 
I think he's the man to go with the ball right now. They're breaking the huddle right off the line, of, uh, out of the sideline here. Oh, they're coming here. in big and yeah, heavy. Yeah, they're going big and heavy. They're going for this one. Aronson up under center. Hands off quickly off the right side. That is double O. Osby. And uh-oh, there he goes. He got that first down on that one. Picks up about four or five yards on that run right there behind the big and heavy. Osby does a good job of running the ball behind his line. 429, first quarter. There's no score. Vero Beach now gets to move the chains and have a new set of downs here after that uh, penalty set him up on a fourth and one. Yeah, a little bump the kicker. That helped. At the 49-yard line of Vero Beach, Robert's going to go in motion to the right side. Little shuffle pass inside, and boy, too much penetration by Northwestern. That play had zero chance. Yeah, you got to help. The running back's got to, somebody's got to pick up the, uh, the, that the defensive linebacker or defensive player that's coming in there. You can't allow him just to get back into your set, into your backfield like he did there. He just penetrated. Yeah, Delvin, Delvin Martin was all the way back in the backfield, made the play. Second down and 14 now for Vero. They're, they're starting to work that, that defense pretty good. Not giving us enough time to throw that ball. Aronson sets up. He's got pressure coming, and he's going down at the 35. Oh, we got a flag, too, at, a, at the 49-yard line. Yeah, that's got to be holding against the defense out there. And that'll be 15 yards from the penalty. Or 10 yards, I guess. It would be a first. Should be enough for a first down. No. Because I think we were, we were on a second and 14. Oh, I thought they did it from the flag. I guess not. They're picking it up, and they're going to mark it off from the. Is it from the line of scrimmage? Or is it? It, it, it's 10 yards. It's 10 yard penalty. So it should be. It's just like it'll a, be a second down and five. All right. Well, looks like there's going to be timeout on the field. With three and a half to go in this first quarter with no score, we'll have more right after this. Hi, JW from Barker Air Conditioning. These hot and humid days sure do take a toll on your air conditioning system. Barker Air Conditioning offers our ESA annual or semi-annual maintenance plan to keep things in good working order. Barker Air Conditioning, servicing Indian River County since 1959. Geno's Nutrition Shop carries a wide selection of safe supplements for athletes no matter their age, especially regular gym goers. I'm Geno, and we love supporting the fighting Indians. Our supplements work for muscle recovery, hydration, focus, immunity health, along with grab-and-go meals. At Geno's Nutrition Shop in Miracle Mile, our customers are family. Welcome back to the Citrus Bowl and Billy Living's Field. Paul Tipton, Gary Paris, GT, Derek, Don, all here tonight. Season opener, Miami Northwestern here at the Citrus Bowl to take on the Fighting Indians. We're at three minutes, 30 seconds remaining first quarter with no score. It's been back and forth, and really the story has been the mistakes that's cost each team drives that could have maybe resulted definitely for Vero Beach in some points. Second down and four for Vero. Handoff, right side, and White. Able to pick up a couple. I tell you, I'm, we're right here in front of the ball. I literally thought I saw two of the white jerseys of Bulls leaning over. You know, we got called on that three times. <laughs> so uh, it's interesting to see how they handle that. Third down and about three yards to go. This is two down territory. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> it's two anywhere, down territory. anywhere on this field is two down territory for Coach Jay. Third and three, Aronson looking to set up, fires, has a receiver, Roberts turns it up to the 40, and he's got enough for a Vero first down. Yeah, that's a good, just a good outlet. He looked deep, he looked at the guys deep, uh, who was going down, Jacobs was on the left side, and you had White, E.J. White on the right side, 
They took off. They cleared out. Then you see the receiver come underneath Roberts, and he makes the catch and gets the first down. Ball at the 37, first and 10. Indians will set up twin receivers on both sides. Aronson, pressured, steps up, trying to run his way, fights his way through. He's still on his feet to the 25 and down to about the 23. The only thing you hold your breath is because he's your, he's your, he's your big daddy quarterback, you know what I mean? But what happened was everybody turned and took a drop and the pressure up front was on him. They got, he saw the middle of the field open up, the line opened up, he took off, had enough for the first down and more. Picks up 14 on that run. Gives Vero a first down to the 23-yard line. This time trips to the left side. Tyler hands off. Hillsman shakes a tackle to the 20. Still on his feet, trying to fight to the 15 and will be just shy. I tell you what, they their secondary comes up very good and, and makes a good tackle. Hillsman makes a great spin away from a linebacker there and it allows him to get that six, seven yards he got there. But I, I tell you, it was a good tackle coming up by their safety. Picked up six, it's second and four. Tyler looking to set up. Now he's pressured, rolling out to his right. He's going to try to run it, and he's going to try to get as much as he can. Flag is down. He's out of bounds around the 10. Another flag comes down. This might be a late hit. A late hit, and let's hope they call holding on the defense. Yeah. And then there may be a holding on us then, too. Still got a minute 38 to go here in the first quarter. Score is 0-0 as we wait to see what's going to happen here with the, the penalty flags that we just saw. Well, what they should do is walk be back a, 10. A chop then, against an illegal block against Northwestern. And then a dead ball personal foul against Northwestern. And that was the late hit. So that puts them into the red zone, the Curran Flooring Company red zone. Ball looks like it's going to be spotted inside the five to about the three-yard line, where it'll be first and goal. And that's a Hummingbird Care Services first down. Aronson throws to the corner. Receivers there. It's caught. Touchdown. Hillsman. He ran a wheel route out of the backfield, lined up as a right side as a running back, and he took the snap. He runs like he's blocking and wheels to the outside and makes a fantastic catch. What a great throw by Tyler Aronson. I mean, that's one of those little wheel routes. Bam, you throw it, it's got to be right there, and he did. Lewis gets set for the extra point. Kick is blocked. So Vero Beach puts six on the board, and they lead with minute 34 to go in the first quarter, 6-0. Caps Pizza and Pub, a proud sponsor of the Botting Indians and Christian FM, serving Vero for over 35 years. Caps offers Italian cuisine, including pizza, strombolis, calzones, hot and cold subs, plus wings. A family-owned and operated business, John and his staff are happy to serve. Caps Pizza and Pub, 725 27th Avenue Southwest, Vero Beach, 772-770-2277 or CapsPizzaMenu.com. Cafe 66, located on US 1, just south of 8th Street. At Cafe 66, our breakfast menu is all about variety. From biscuits and gravy, to country fried steak and eggs, to Nutella stuffed French toast. Our lunch and dinner menus have something for everyone, from barbecue platters to unique burgers. Our hours are online at cafe66vero.com. We proudly support the Fighting Indians. 65 yards and 10 plays, a three-yard catch from Jonathan Hillsman in the end zone, and Vero Beach on the board, 6-0. This scoring drive brought to you by McCall Insurance Agency. 134 to go, first quarter. 
And Vero Beach strikes first. Lewis gets set for the kickoff. Short pooch around the 30. Caught to the 35. And a nice tackle. That's Osby. That's Osby, the running back. Comes down, makes a great tackle on that. If you're going to kick a pooch kick, you want to kick it a little higher to allow your guys to get a chance to get downfield. What he did, he came up, the return guy did on that one. All right, before we get to this first play, let's go down to the sideline. Derek, what you got? Guys, I went into the defensive huddle between that last drive, and I, you know, it was just really encouraging to hear Coach Bethel talk about uh, our ability to really to, to block those guys and to move them out of the way, just continue to watch the ball so we don't jump off sides. Handoff goes up the cut, and it ran into a black wall there. And that was led by Alford. And I... I believe that's Corbin on the uh, one of the uh, defensive linemen. Uh, you had McClintock and you had Alford all in on that tackle right there. I'll give him a yard. Second down and nine at the 35. Four receiver set. Trips to the right side for the Bulls and Adrian Posey. A quarterback goes over his head. Ball's on the ground. And a fight for it. Oh, man. <laughs> Bacon had a shot at it and ran right by to get his attention all on the quarterback. Uh, he had his uh, his target was that number 11 on his jersey, the quarterback, pa Posey, and uh, the ball went over Posey's head, and he actually tried to tip it back, and, and uh, that's a live ball. That would have been a big recovery mm -hmm. right there for the fighting end. They'll lose 13 as we're coming into the last few seconds of this first quarter. Yeah, they let it, they should let this one just run on down. Play clock is at 15, and game clock is now at 10. So there's about two second difference between the two, and I believe that's what Coach Harris for Northwestern will do is let this clock run out and regroup here. That's the end of the first quarter. Vero Beach on top, 6-0. Second quarter's coming your way. This is Fighting Indians football. Smart, stylish, fly, these are the words of Dapper. Joey's Downtown Dapper, a barber shop that provides more than haircuts. They provide a fun experience with a local flavor. Owner Joey Lucchini is a lifelong resident of Vero Beach, loves supporting local charities, youth sports, and fighting Indians football. Joey's Downtown Dapper, 2005 14th Avenue, downtown Vero Beach, a supporter of Christian FM. The safety of young athletes is priority one. The professionals at Vero Elite Rehab and Orthopedic Surgery are the official physicians for fighting Indian sports. We thank them for helping make this broadcast possible. They offer care in orthopedics, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. More at prosportsandeliterehab.com. This is Fighting Indians Football on the Vero Nation Network, brought to you by Ohana Water Systems. The Citrus Bowl, Billy Living's Field is where we are tonight. It's the season opener, and it's a heavyweight battle. Vero Beach hosting Miami Northwestern. Paul Tipton, Gary Paris, GT Paris, Derek West, and Don Dexter here tonight to get this season underway. And currently, Vero Beach scored at the end of the first quarter to make it a 6-0 lead for the Fighting Indians over the Northwestern Bulls. The Bulls now will get the possession to start this second quarter. They're going to be looking at a third down and 22 after that high snap. Pass is complete to the 30-yard line, and it'll be down around the 32-yard line, and that young man will have to come off for a play after he lost his helmet, and a flag comes Whoa. in late. I don't understand why. what the penalty is on that. The helmet, he's calling it against Vero Beach for... Oh, they're going to say that he pulled, they pulled helmet the helmet off. off. Oh, my goodness. You know, that's... He... I, I just... I'm, I don't want to say anything. I'll get us... Yeah. I don't want to get anybody in no, trouble no, no. or anything. That... Mm. All right. Wow. You folks that are home are watching it on TV. You saw what we saw. The kid got hit. The helmet popped off. And uh, you tackling, and the kid lowers his shoulder into you, and you wrap him up, and the helmet popped off, and they're going to call that against Vero Beach? I mean, that's just not a, not a good call. It gives him a first down. That was looking to probably be a punt situation for 
the Bulls. Instead, now it's first down and 10. They'll have the ball at their own 48-yard line. Down by six. Got a trips bunch on the right side. Receiver in motion. Gets the handoff. Shakes a few tackles. Turns it up field quickly to the 45. Yeah, you saw some acceleration right there. There's that speed we talked to, we talked earlier about right there as Glover, wide receiver, came in motion on a little handoff that time, and he saw that seam and just cut up and picks up seven yards on that play. Second and three. Posey going to fire, has a receiver through his hands. That would have been a first down for the Bulls. Instead, it will be a third down. Yeah, that, that, that ball was thrown well. I mean, when I say well, maybe a little behind him, but the receiver, Lanier, had a shot at catching that ball, and that would have been a first down. So that brings up third and about three. And this is where you look for, again, you're probably in two-down territory here for both teams at this stage. Just a minute into the second quarter, it's a 6-0 lead for Vero Beach. And Northwestern to the line for a third and three at the Vero 45. Receiver's gonna go in motion. Screen pass underneath. Couple blocks to the 35 and tackle to the 31 yard line by Xbox and it is a first down for Northwestern. I tell you what, their big offensive tackle uh, on the left side over there, number 70 did a great job. Uh, that's uh, Trey uh, Caliso, he does a great job of getting out there and taking us, knocking one of our guys away on that. It was the tackle and the receiver, and that's it. Those were your blockers out there, and uh, good job by him. Fierro's going to go with a four-man front here, and timeout's going to be taken by... Vero Beach will step aside. It's a 6-0 lead for Vero Beach here in the second quarter. Downtown Dipper Ice Cream Shop on 14th Avenue in Vero Beach. Downtown Dipper is a step back in time to an old school ice cream shop. Serving 24 flavors of hand scooped ice cream. A family owned and operated ice cream shop. Open Tuesday through Sunday and closed on Mondays. Thanks to Downtown Dipper for supporting Christian FM and the Fighting Indians. Timeout taken by Vero Beach to talk a few things over on the defensive side. Miami Northwestern just got a first down, and so they're at the Bureau 31, down by six with a first and 10 coming their way. Next week, Vero Beach will host Palm Beach Gardens here at the Citrus Bowl. Game time's at 7 o'clock. Our coverage begins with countdown to kickoff at 6 p.m. Northwestern going to go with a five-wide look. Three to the right, two to the left. Posey from the gun. Quick fire in the slant, caught to the 24. I tell you what, there was two receivers at the spot. A flag and over on the flag far side. On the right side. But I'm going to tell you right now, there were two receivers of their receiving team was near. That's illegal. Yeah, they got an ineligible downfield. Downfield. He may have been a covered receiver, too. That may have been yeah, the one. We saw that last week for us. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll move them back. But again, it was a quick hitch throw. In, yep. And there was like, it looked like a slant came in from the outside and a hitch right in the inside. There was two there. Good throw by Posey. And again, the penalty brought it back. That ball moves to the 36 yard line where it'll be a first and 15 for the Bulls. As we reach. Ten minutes remaining in the second quarter. That's got to be a delay of and game. And delay of game. Yeah, the play clock is zero. That'll move them back another five yards. Now looking at a first and 20. Well, the clock starts at 25 seconds after a penalty like they just had. And they're talking, they're trying to, but he had 25 seconds. 
They were thinking it was 40 seconds as Coach Harris is arguing with the officials on it. So they're going to – not sure he'll change their minds I, on this. I don't this. know how you can change it. You've got to call it. It's called by the guy back there. He's watching the clock the whole time, and he's he's the one in the deep. The deep back guy in the back, secondary, he's the one that watches the clock. It's not the sideline reporter. I mean the sideline reporter. <laughs> sideline official, it's the guy in the back end. So they're talking to each other. I guess what Coach Harris is saying, I don't think he get they got it. They they were moving it before they started the clock. Hey, this Tuesday night, join us at Caps Pizza for the coach's corner. Gary Parrish, myself, Coach Jankowski there. We uh, sit down with Coach and talk about Indians football. Starts at 6 p.m. Now Can't join us there at the restaurant. You can yeah. join us live on our YouTube channel, Vero Nation Network. I got a, I got a text here. I got a shout-out from a guy, John Clark, who's up in uh, Minnesota listening to us tonight, was a dear friend to Ronnie Self. Now, I'm not sure what happened here. I guess they called no play on it because of the clock. There's no penalty been marked off. And the clock hasn't started running yet. So, so hey, kudos to Coach Harris. He talked him out of it. Now Coach Jay and yeah. Coach Ray Hall <laughs> want to know what happened. Right. <laughs> it's one of those moments, folks. Yeah, you know, one of those hey, moments. Hey, listen, man, I'd hate the referee. I hate to be. I would hate to be a referee, man. I'm. Now there you go. Well, there they go. Now they're going to mark it off. Yeah, so. I, I, I would hate to be one because it's so hard to get them. Well, yeah, and that is the thing right now, folks. I mean, you know, last week we played a game on Thursday. The reason for that is because there is a shortage of officials, and the only way they can get enough officials at all the games is if they these schools move their games around a little bit. First and 20 from the 41. Posey going to try to run, and he's tackled from behind by Bacon, that's and he lost sack. his helmet. Hopefully that's not a flag. No, no, it, it popped off his head. I know, but. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That, that's right. Right call. Just saying. So now Posey has to come out for a play. Looks like they're going to be bringing in Strauder as the uh, backup. Yep, Leon Strauder, just a sophomore, 6'1", 200 pounds. And on second down and 21 now. 9-23 and counting, second quarter, 6-0 lead for Vero Beach over Miami. Going to go five wide. Play clock's at six. They get the snap, trying to go to screen underneath. Got a couple of blocks to the 30, 25. And that might be enough for a first down. It is. That's just not a good job of tackling and, and not reading. Your defense has got to do a little better job of reading that screen right there. That's the third time they've called that screen. And, and you just got to be able to read it a little quicker, and you've got to be able to um, get over there. That's Coach uh, Mata is not going to like that coverage no, on that one. No, not at all. Strotter's going to stay out there. And again, well, they'll go trips to the right. Four receivers set with one back in the backfield. Strotter now looking over the right. Pump fakes. Now he's pressured out. He's going to let it fly. Looking for a receiver, and that'll be out of bounds. Coming up on the 10th play of this drive. As we're inside nine minutes to go in this second quarter. Yeah, I believe that's E.J. White out there playing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's playing the corner position out there. Mis yeah, Mr. Uh, our all-around Mr. Athlete out there. He is a good athlete. Uh, here's a big down again right here for him again. Second, Yeah, second down and 10. The ball's yeah. at the 19-yard line of Vero Beach. Trips right side, a little bunch formation. 
Strawner rolls. Pressure coming. Now steps up. He's got an angle. 15, 10, and down near the five. That'll be a first and goal situation. Picked up 12 on that carry. You have got to find your eyes. You've got to keep your eyes on the ball. You've got to find the ball, especially if you're on the backside of a play. You've got to see if you're if he's rolling to the right, you have got to respect his position. Now we got a late flag coming in from the Northwestern sideline. And that can't be, that's got to be a, uh, I think, I think because the coach was on the field. Conduct. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a 15 yard penalty there. That'd be first and goal. Oh, it's a five-yard five penalty. penalty. Wow, well, so I don't know. Sure, put what, it at the twelve. I'm not sure what the call was. I'm pretty sure the the coach stepped on the field, and I, I believe that was it was a sideline penalty. Eight and a half to go, second quarter. It'll be third, first and goal from the twelve. Well, Strotter they, checking in the sideline. He's got three receivers on his right, a single to the left. Handoff, left side to the 10, to the 5, inside the 5. Yeah, they're they're doing a good job now. Of, we're not being able to get to that opposite side. They, they load up one way and ran the ball back the other way, and they had a good job blocking by the offensive line. Got it at the 3, second and goal. Play action. Strotter's got an angle, trying to dive for it, and he got it. Three-yard run, Leon Strider. And the Bulls are going to try an extra point and can take the lead in this ball game. I tell you. Hit was so wide open that I believe you could have run that one in on that play. <laughs> I mean, there was such a hole there. He was trying to look and find everybody. Then all of a sudden, he just took off and run right up in there and got that touchdown. Kick is up, and it is good. Northwestern takes the one-point lead here in the second quarter. It's 7-6. Hi, JW from Barker Air Conditioning. These hot and humid days sure do take a toll on your air conditioning system. Barker Air Conditioning offers our ESA annual or semi-annual maintenance plans to keep things in good working order. Barker Air Conditioning, servicing Indian River County since 1959. The mission of the Fighting Indian is excellence, teamwork, and consistency. The same holds true for the McCall Agency, Inc., a local independent agency and broker and fourth-generation resident of Vero Beach. To learn more about their insurance products and risk management, 772-473-6856. And their site is McCallAgencyInc.com, serving the Treasure Coast since 1956. 66 yards, 12 plays, a three-yard run by Leon Strotter. And the extra point is good to make it a 7-6 lead now for Northwestern. 7.44 to go in the second quarter. We talked about this being a heavyweight battle, and it's living up to it so far. But, Gary, really, the theme so far has been it's the, the mistakes, the penalties, and things that are ca ca catching up with both sides. Well, again, Vero Beach has had a, a legitimate two touchdowns, probably one for sure called back, and a good drive that would cause them another one. So. Yeah. I mean, they've been their own worst enemy the first two ball games, and they won the first one 49 nothing. Now they're uh, down 7-6 here. They're playing against a very good football team. Aller going to kick it high to the left side around the 10. Reverse. And Williams will be stopped near around the 19. That's excellent coverage by them. That they, You know, that very first time they saw that, go in they we went in the end zone they saw the thought and the design of reversing mm -hmm. it and this time we tried it but their coverage was really really good on that one we couldn't we didn't get back to the 20 i think we got to 19. so 
So it'll be first down and 10 for Vero Beach. First time they've trailed in this ball game. Down by a point, 7-6. Aronson will have a four receiver set, two on either side. And Hill's been set up in the backfield. Pressure coming. Tyler steps up, fires, looking for White. And coverage there, stride for stride. It falls incomplete. Yeah, that, that young man right there, Zeon Parrott, he just said, hey, look, I'll run with you all day, big guy. And he did. I mean, there was no – he he actually was ahead of the, White, the receiver, on mm -hmm. that play. Second down and ten. Now you need some first downs now. Right now, what your offense needs – is a, some first downs to get yeah. some momentum going. On second and 10, looked and throw again, trying to set up a screen, and this time Aronson overshoots White, his intended target. And there's a penalty, I think, on the far side. And it was late. Coach Jay wants to talk to Tyler on this, you know, about that. That that throw was behind White on that one. And well over his head, too. Yeah. <laughs> so penalty is going to go against Northwestern, unsportsmanlike conduct. And that's going to be a, a nice little shot in the arm for Viral Beach as they'll get the ball up to the 34-yard line. They call that on and a first down. Mincy, uh, and I guess the unsportsmanlike I don't know exactly what happened over there, but they called it, and yeah, we'll take it. There's our. Aronson's quick look to the sideline on first and 10 at their own 34, down by a point. Aronson fires, looking downfield. He's looking for Roberts, and tight coverage over there, and it was overthrown anyway. So well, it brings up second down. He, he, you know, one thing you, you ask your receiver to do when you make that corner route or the to the sideline, never slow down. Let Stay with it. Stay with the grid. And every time you look back, you start to slow down. And Tyler's under a lot of pressure. He, he was throwing it to where he thought the receiver might be. You're going to go trips left side on second and ten. Aronson looking left, fires. He's got a receiver oh. over there, and it goes right through his hands. He had Roberts, who was open. Would have got a nice game, maybe close to a first down if he catches that ball, but instead it's incomplete, and we're looking at third and ten. Yeah, that was a uh, quick out, speed out out there by Roberts, Roberts on that play. Ball might be just a little high, but it's catchable. When you're uh, playing at this level of football, You've got to catch a ball like that, and I think Isaiah knows that and would have uh, liked another opportunity. 7-15 left in the second quarter. It's a 7-6 lead for Northwestern over Vero Beach. Third and 10 for the Indians from their own 34. Aronson steps up. He's got some room if he wants to run it, but he's quickly taken down. He'll pick up about maybe five. And they're going to let him do that. They're going to let him run what they can. They're going to cover. They're fast. They got speed. And one thing they'll do is that if he gets to thinking he's going to outrun them, he's a big, big mistake on his part because there's a long way to go to get a first down. And, and again, that secondary, they had us well covered on that play. They'll give him a three-yard gain. It's now fourth and seven. Quick punt by Aronson, caught at the 35 to the 40. 45, trying to get a lane, midfield. May not get caught. Flag is down, and it's a score for Northwestern. And it's a silly penalty against Northwestern because the guy was already around, but they got, he got hit from behind. One of our guys, Get hit from the blind side or blind, I don't say blind side, to the side of him, and he knocked him down. It might be a holding call. Yeah. 
The Northwestern fans, are, I don't even think, are aware that there was a penalty. Yeah, and again, then that's that pooch kick. They weren't fooled. They weren't fooled. They did. They were able to get back there, and they were able to. And again, if you're going to kick it, you've got to kick it really high. On that one, Paul, it was a line drive, and it allowed the, the return man to catch it and uh, and make a great play. And the only reason it's not a we're not trailing by more is it was a penalty. All right, uh, Derek is down there on the sidelines. Derek. Uh, Looked like the defense was a little out of sorts on that last drive by Northwestern today. I feel like they maybe got some things worked out. Yeah, it kind of came out of their lanes a little bit. Kind of were watching the, uh, kind of trying to anticipate the snap a little bit more instead of watching the ball. So Coach Bethel's been like, guys, watch the ball, watch the ball, watch the ball, watch the ball. We're doing well, but just watch the ball. So, so trying to clean that up. And that's what I think I was saying is that you got to find the ball. You've got to find the ball. What there's happening is these guys are taking off to the right, and then we're pursuing so hard they cut back. When they cut back, there's nobody there. Nobody's got yeah. their eyes on the ball at that point. So we're actually in the water break situation right here at 623. It's a 7-6 lead for Northwestern. And you just kind of, it's slowly, but its you feel the momentum slowly going over to the Northwestern side here. At the Vero Beach, punted that ball away. And even though it was a, a, a penalty that stopped this, that punt return, just in the minds of everybody, looks big. First down and 10 at the Vero 35 for the Bulls. Going to go with four receivers. Three left, one right. Posey back in at quarterback. He's looking to throw pressure coming. He steps up in the pocket. Hit from behind. He gets to about the 35-yard line. And that'll be a no-gainer. Maybe Actually, they're going to give him a yard, looks like. Yeah, it looked like Kevin Pollock and getting involved in on that hit, too. Again, find the ball. They always teach yeah. as a defender is you got to keep your eyes. Find the ball as fast as you can. If you're one of the three guys up front and those three or four linebackers, you've got to find that ball. And if you're in a zone, the safety's got to be able to find it. Second and nine. Five wide. Posey, pressure coming, and he goes down. A flag as well. There you go. How about Montgomery and Rivers in there? Rivers got that sack right there. Avion got the sack coming in from the right side. That's a big play. That's a big play. There's a penalty, and they got them for holding. You decline that, and you take that good play. It makes it third and uh, almost 20 yards. I don't know where the flag is. The holding, it, Gary, where the flag was, the holding penalty would actually put them back further. But it looks like, yeah, they're going to just give him the sack. I don't yeah, know. You, you want the down. Right, right. Yeah, you yeah you're right down. about that, yeah. You want the down because now it makes it third, third down. Third down. Uh, I, I don't give those guys any more plays. <laughs> That's a great job by uh, Good adjustment APL. by this defense so far. That's the third sack by the defense this quarter. Now look for a screen pass over yep. here some way, somehow. Yep. You see that bunch over on the left side. Third down and 16. Pressure coming. He's going to fire. Finds the receiver and a good coverage right off the bat. And incomplete. it's actually incomplete. Did not complete the catch. He would have had about a one-yard gain on that reaction yep. that time. Good coverage by the Indians. That looked like that Amar Reynolds might have been the guy over there on that hit. Yep. So fourth down. There you go. Yeah, That's what look, you want. Yeah, the punt unit's coming out. Well, you want it. You got five minutes in, left in the second quarter. Now you want to go down and score here. Take up as much time as you can because they get the ball to start the Cor third quarter. Correct. Five oh two to go. Second quarter. It's a seven six lead for Northwestern. Aller set to punt the ball away for Northwestern. Griffin back deep for Vero. Punt is away. Good high towering punt. And Vero Beach, you can just get away from it. And they'll down it right around the 15-yard line. And we got a flag over on the 
Vero, near the Vero sideline. Uh, you you want to take the ball. You, uh, yes, he's going to push him back. It depends on what the penalty is. Yeah. If you can get better field position than on the punt, you just got to hope. False start. False start. So now they'll make him kick it back five more yards, which will put it around the 47-yard line, somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah, and uh, yeah, now. Yeah, the wind's coming out of the east, and that's what they'll be kicking into the east. So, yeah, you got a few things that might work in your favor here, and you never know. Bad snap. Just hang on to it back there. Isaiah, just hang on to it. I think this. Yeah, Roberts is going to go back deep this time. Yeah. All are set to punt the ball away. Gets the ball away. Good punt. Fair catch called by Roberts wow. right around the seven yard line. And I think. Uh, Northwestern got the better out of that deal. Absolutely. That's about a 45-yard punt almost. So now Vero Beach. Wow. We'll start around their seven-yard line. Okay. Yeah, that just didn't yeah, – it was one of those things. Yep. You, you look at it, you, you take it, you push them back, you go from the 15 back to the uh, seven now. Looks like it actually be the eight yard line. Okay, the eight. First down and 10. Handoff, Osby. We'll get about to the nine. We, we just don't have that physical contact up front like we did last week right now. The, the yep. offensive line is just not getting that surge mm -hmm. to allow your running backs to get find, get into the the running hole They're, they got to run to and then be able to make a move. Everything's been in the backfield. That was a one-yard gain and, uh, on that play. Second and nine, four, 12 and counting, second quarter. Another handoff, Osby, left side. Not much going this time. Pretty much a no-gainer. Yeah, that's, again... Uh, penetration. That's by a linebacker that came flying up from the outside uh, on that play. Uh, 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 that's Jarvis Hill. Now you've got three minutes and 45 seconds to yep. left to go here in the, the first half, and you're looking at third and nine. So you got to come up with a nine and a half yard play. <laughs> <laughs> Barrow's going to take their time here a little bit and milk this clock as much as they can as the play clock now down to five seconds. Aronson looking to throw, steps up. He's got room to run. 15, 20, 25, 30, and a big Indian first down. Tyler Aronson using his feet. Well, there you see that, again, everybody in a white shirt turned their back to him. The line did a good job of getting that hole there Tyler saw it. There was everybody was running with a defender, I mean a receiver, and boom, he just took off and picks up about 26 yards on that play. To the 34-yard line. First down and 10. Aronson. Pressure coming. Fires downfield. Flag will come in. This looks like a holding penalty. Yeah. Yeah, you can almost put that in the bank. And that's going to back him up to the 20. Mm. See, and again, what happens in a situation like this, Paul, a lot of times is that all of a sudden these guys are getting some fresh legs over there. Yeah. And they're, uh, they're maybe rotating, but the, their athleticism is pretty good on that defensive line. And right now, and it, we're, our feet are not moving as quick as we should. And to get in front, we have not opened up a hole. We have not been able – our best play running has been our quarterback. All right. They'll spot it at the 24. 
First down, handoff to Hillsman off the left side. Jonathan gets stacked up. He'll pick up about maybe four on the carry. Yeah, the, the, again, you're not getting a, you're getting the guys into that was a, a not a bad play, but the problem is there's nothing after you get two or three yards. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing after that. So now brings up third down, and you've got a long way to go. Or excuse me, second down. They had a penalty. That's right. Then. It'd be like a second and sixteen with the ball at the twenty-seven yard line. Aronson, oh my goodness, too much pressure in the backfield, and he'll go down. Wow. It's and you kinda, lose three. It's kind of like the Sharks now smell blood. Yeah. They smell blood. Mm -hmm. Got a minute 37 to go. Timeout's going to be taken by Northwestern. Save some clock here because they're looking, Vero's looking at a third down and 16. We'll step aside. Vero's down by one here late in the second quarter. A septic system is only as good as the installation and maintenance. Reliable Septic is the name known along the coast for being the professionals who install and service these systems for both residential and commercial uses. They'll determine the on-site needs and design considerations for a complete wastewater treatment system. Thanks to Reliable Septic Service. 772-562-4242. Ohana Water Systems is proud to partner with Christian FM. Hi, I'm Mikey, owner of Ohana Water Systems. We've created a technology that takes city and even well water and turn it into drinkable, pH-balanced, remineralized alkaline water throughout the entire house. Our system also protects the plumbing and appliances from hard water damage. No obligation consultations and water testing available. Online at ohanawatersystems.com. So Vero Beach is down by one, seven to six. You got a minute 37 to go in the second quarter. And Vero Beach now looking at a third down and 20 after the penalty and a sack on back-to-back -back plays. Again, there's a big play right here. You surely need to come up with a big first down if you can because they got one timeout left and they would – if you get a play and the, if it's an incomplete pass, they're going to not call timeout and make you have to punt. Bears going to go five wide. Aronson with a keeper trying to run it up the gut, and he'll get to the 25, and that's it. They got to call timeout. No, I think Northwestern. No, they thought they were going to call timeout. They they're, got one They're going to hang out. on to it. Now, he, they're now, he, now Coach Harris is going to call that timeout. And we'll stop the clock at 116. So then Vero will do, punt this ball do, away. Do you feel like the momentum has absolutely ever since the, about the middle of the first quarter, somewhere in that period, you know, has swung the other way now? The pendulum's gone the other way. Yeah, I agree, Gary. Uh, you know, and ironically enough, I felt like where it really changed was when Posey lost his helmet, had to come out for a play. Strotter comes in and totally changed the complexion of the Northwestern offense. Absolutely. He was more of a uh, – he threw a nice little screen pass. They yeah. went into a screen pass, ran the ball well. Now you got a fourth down situation here. And you've got to – they're not scared to return this ball either. No, they're, no, no, not at all. And, and right now I just feel that the momentum has swung over to the um, the Bulls. So Wet Miller will come out to punt the ball away for Vero. Punt is away. Pretty good high punt. Takes a big Vero bounce to inside the 30-yard line, rolling its way to about the 26. Now that is a momentum breaker <laughs> right there <laughs> with a punt like that. What a great punt by Wet Miller when we needed that. That, that is a 50-yard punt. Thank you, new turf. Yeah, new, yeah. <laughs> Not often do you get that roll on the old turf, but you do with that one. <laughs> All right, so 
we'll say the 27 yard line first down and 10 with 65 seconds remaining in the second quarter with no timeouts they bulls have. are up by one and now the bulls are down no timeouts so posey and he got a jump that's that's the second time matt bacon has been caught uh, for that jump like that, it's the third time I think the defense, or it's the third time Matt has done it. Yes. Oh boy, Matt Bacon, yeah, can't do that. So give him five, and no time comes off the clock. No, they get five yards. No, and what it does is it gives you an opportunity now. You can go downfield now. Posey, he's looking to throw. He's got a receiver, and it's oh! almost intercepted. What a good! break on the ball and that uh, was Amar Reynolds. Amar Reynolds why man Amar really I thought he had him I and did then all of a sudden Amar reaches out up there and almost made the interception wow that would have been big big time that would have been that huge. Been big good play yes but an interception would have been huge yeah so got a minute second down and five Five wide for Northwestern. Posey, pressure coming. Steps out of one tackle. And will get to the 35-yard line, a pickup of three. But yeah. they have no timeout, so they cannot stop the clock. And it brings up third down and one now. Clock at 39 seconds. Posey looking to throw. Fires. Has a receiver at midfield. He caught, caught the ball. Posey down, though. And a flag on the play. Oh. A flag on the play. Roughing the passer against Vero. Vero Beach. So add 15 to that play. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Just when you get the momentum going back, yeah. you got it. And now you <laughs> got to rip off 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. So now it's down to 49 with 34 seconds to go. No yep. timeouts. Actually, they're just going to spot it at the 49-yard line. Yeah, it's a it's a 15-yard penalty the, from the line, line of scrimmage. Okay. First down and 10. And again, Bulls are content to go with a five-wide setup. There's still some discussion with the officials. Well, I'm basing it on what they did. They marked yeah, it from the line right, of scrimmage. Right. But what the, Carroll's Coach Harris is saying, it was a catch. Should be tacked on. Well, it was. On, it should yeah. be tacked on. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's uh, – I don't want to say anything. First down. Now they're going to say that you're going to mark off 15 yards. Either you get the first down or you get the. <laughs> wow. I, I, I tell I, you what. I got nothing to say. I don't either. So clock's now ticking. 23 seconds. Posey, boy, he about lost the ball. Fires. Finds it, it's incomplete. He had a receiver it was a little bit behind him, and it falls incomplete. That actually may not be a bad thing for them. No, that ball was behind, but it stopped the clock, and uh, they have no timeouts. The first down would have stopped the clock, I would believe. Would have stopped the clock yeah. momentarily. Not in college anymore, but in, uh, <laughs> in high school, they, feel they still will do it. So you got 17 seconds left in the quarter before we get to halftime. Looking at a second and 10 at the Vero 49. And he got a good kicker in this Aller. We've seen him kick tonight, punt and kick. Posey going to fire. Receiver screen over the right side. Got a couple of blocks. 35, 30, 25, 20. Turning on the Jets. Five touchdown. 49 yard. And what a catch and run. Lenner, Lanier with the reception, 49-yard catch and run. He's just a freshman, folks. That young man is just a freshman that made that 
The blocks were fantastic. You know, we just took some bad angles on that one to get yeah. over there. Yeah. All are set to try to put an extra point on the board. Now whistle's going to stop things before they start. Delay It'll be a of false game. Delay. Oh, yeah, delay against the kicking unit. Wow. What so, you... Coach Harris has played this one well because this is kind of like a two-for-one, Gary, because they'll get the ball to start the third quarter. Absolutely. They did, the, they did exactly what we did not want to happen. They were able to do it. And there's a lot, you know, it's two halves to a game. Sure, <laughs> totally, totally. You're not out of this by any stretch. So they'll mark this one back five yards, and Oliver gets set for the extra point. High snap, but it's down, and butt kick is blocked. So it'll be a 13-6 lead now for Northwestern. The ball started at their own 27-yard line. A couple penalties helped keep this drive moving forward. And then, of course, the receiver screen pass to the 49 yards. So four plays. 73 yards for the Bulls. And this scoring drive brought to you by the McCall Insurance Agency. 13-6 score right now. Bulls on top. Now the Indians got to get together, and they've got to be able to figure out some of the ways they can. They're taking some bad angles. They're taking uh, missing some tackles. Uh, they, they just have just things they need to adjust on to figure out how they can get this momentum back to their side. Offensively, we just got to, we have not been able to block their front seven. Mm -hmm. Their front seven is winning the battle. We we came out, looked like we were doing a great job in the first half, first quarter, but ever since our score, we just have not been able to answer. We don't have an answer for their front seven right now. In my opinion, that's just my thoughts. I don't disagree with your thoughts. <laughs> Seven seconds to go. You squibbed this one? Yes, absolutely. You put a squib on it. Oh, flag's coming in now from the other sideline. Delay of game. Okay, so now you're moving back five yards. Do you still squib or oh, you yeah. go deep? You, you got seven seconds. Viral's got to get on it fast. Literally, has got to get the ball. I mean, they recover it. They got to call. Mm -hmm. They got to call time. Well, they the clock no, the stops. Clock will stop. Clock stops. They just got to recover it really fast, and not try to run it. You know what I mean? They got to down it. You get a guy like Osby right up here, in in rolling. Get it around midfield. Aronson can throw the ball that far. Or you may want to kick it deep and let them run it. That's what I think is going to happen. We'll find out here in just one second. He's Aller's going to kick it deep. Caught at the 12. 15, 20, 30, and that's where they're stopped. And it's one second, I believe. Oh, they got to have the clock's got to stop. Well, they're saying no. And they're going to call the first half a play, I guess. All right. So, Vero Beach is going to go to the locker room down by seven to Northwestern. And we'll go down the sideline. GT Paris has got Coach Jankowski. Coach, you got two heavyweights coming in here tonight. I don't think anybody, any, anybody that watches football or understands football in high school knows what to expect tonight, I mean, but you give me a tell me what you saw the first half, put it into a boxing match, like I said. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. We got you got two very good teams with a lot of talent, you know, everything, everything matters, everything's critical, everything's related. So, there were some things that happened, you know, unfortunate there early. I uh, had a touchdown called back uh, on a you know, a, a, a shift or whatever, whatever happened there, um, whatever they saw. So, um. Uh, that was unfortunate, and then you know, giving up that touchdown there with seven seconds left in the half. Um, but but it's it, you know, like I said, it's it's a, it's a game of two halves. It's a 48 minute plus game. Uh, we talked about that all week, and and we'll go in there and get some things cleaned up and have a good second half. 
And let me ask this real quick. I know up front, it seems like, like you said, it shifted a little bit. Seems like a little bit up front, they took a little bit of control. What do you go in there and tell your linemen and your defense alignment on the front side? Just, just to hang on to, to, you know, to our rules, our fundamentals. I mean, we're, we're fine. Um, we just got to, you know, like I said, it, it's, when we get opportunities, we got to take advantage of it on both sides of the football. Um, you know, we've had them on, in, on, on, you know, good down and distance situations on defense, and you know, some things have happened, and then, and then vice versa on offense. So, again, everything matters. Everything's critical. We'll get some things cleaned up, and, and I feel good about the second half. Thanks, coach. Coach Jankowski along with GT Paris talking about his thoughts on the first half of play. Vero Beach goes to the locker room down 13 to 6 to Northwestern. We'll step aside. The Genesis Church halftime show is coming up featuring women of the Fighting Indians along with Bobby Paris. This is Fighting Indians Football. Hi, Derek West here from the Genesis Church of Vero Beach. We are proud supporters of Fighting Indians Football and Vero Beach Athletics. We invite you to join us this Sunday at 915 for our services. If you can't join us in person, please visit us online at gcvero.com. Genesis Church of Vera Beach, place of love where honest men are known and unafraid to love the hardest hardest home. Visit us at gcvero.com. Cafe 66, located on US 1, just south of 8th Street. At Cafe 66, our breakfast menu is all about variety. From biscuits and gravy, to country fried steak and eggs, to Nutella stuffed French toast, our lunch and dinner menus have something for everyone. From barbecue platters to unique burgers. Our hours are online at cafe66vero.com. We proudly support the Fighting Indians. Hi, I'm Shelly, owner of Dog Training Elite Treasure Coast. Our family passion is to help the families that come to us create peace and harmony in the home with their beloved family dog. At Dog Training Elite, we're dedicated to helping our clients, along with their dogs, learn obedience, manners, or train to be service dogs. Any size and age, we can help. Online at DogTrainingEliteTreasureCoast.com. Go Indians! Welcome to the Fighting Indians Halftime Show, brought to you by Genesis Church. Here's your host, Bobby Paris. Welcome to Women of the Fighting Indians, where we can get a woman's perspective of Friday night under the lights. I am Bobby Paris, and I have the privilege of interviewing the moms of our senior varsity players, and also a few of the ladies who helped to make this football season and program the awesome success it has become over the years. This evening and uh, the beginning of a great 23 football season, my guest is the adorable, vivacious Angela Banzoff. Welcome, Angela. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Okay, can you believe it's football season already? And I am so excited. Got a lot of things to talk about. Angela is our Booster Club president, and I consider her a close runner-up to the Energizer Bunny. But with amazing ideas, of which I'm going to let her tell you about and how you can get involved with all of this fun. But first, Angela, tell us about yourself. Um, Yes, hi. So I'm a very proud mom of three kids. My husband, Rob, and I have been married for 19 years. We have two sons that are on the varsity team. Parker is a junior, Austin's a sophomore, and then our daughter Lucille is a seventh grader at Gifford Middle. Um, I'm also a graduate of Vero Beach High School. I was a cheerleader and ran track, and then moved on to Auburn for college, War Eagle. And yeah, just really excited to be a part of this program. Just love being a a part of being able to support the team and the players and love our Friday nights. And I know that you are an event planner. That is your job. However, I think you've sort of morphed into this booster club as a full-time job, it seems like right now. And I think that's exciting. So um, just give us an idea of what we have to look forward to this season. You might want to touch on this last golf tournament you had too. Yes, so we just had a very successful golf tournament, um, which was at at Point West Golf Club, and we have so many volunteers and and sponsors and people that support us, and it was great. So that's just a little bit of what the Boosters was doing over the summer. Moving into the season, we have eight home games, and uh, with that comes a lot of responsibility for our Booster board. We handle the parking lots, the concessions, helping feed all of the officials, obviously always feeding the team and the coaches, and just being an all-around support for the program. 
That is amazing. And the fact that you all do all of that, I talk to moms that come from their kids have played for other schools or whatnot. This is a star, a five star program. They are just a goss at what you all do and the things you do for the team. And uh, we've got an exciting year. We have new turf on the uh, football field that's absolutely beautiful now. Women of Fighting Indians football will continue right after this. Hi, Derek West here from the Genesis Church of Vera Beach. We are proud supporters of Fighting Indians football and Vera Beach Athletics. We invite you to join us this Sunday at 915 for our services. If you can't join us in person, please visit us online at gcvero.com. Genesis Church of Vera Beach, place of love where honest men are known and unafraid to love the hardest heart of stone. Visit us at gcvero.com. Cafe 66, located on US 1, just south of 8th Street. At Cafe 66, our breakfast menu is all about variety. From biscuits and gravy, to country fried steak and eggs, to Nutella stuffed French toast. Our lunch and dinner menus have something for everyone. From barbecue platters, to unique burgers. Our hours are online at Cafe66Bureau.com. We proudly support the Fighting Indians. Mullinary Pools is a proud supporter of Fighting Indians football and Christian FM. A family-owned and operated business, the Mullinary family, longtime members of this community. Joel Mullinary, a former Fighting Indian, loves serving the Treasure Coast residents from pool cleaning to repairs to pool remodeling. Mullinary Pools. Love people. Love pools. 772-778-2633 or MullinaryPools.com. The Fighting Indians Halftime Show is brought to you by Genesis Church. Once again, Bobby Paris. I have the privilege of interviewing the moms of our senior varsity players and also a few of these great ladies who helped to make this football season and program the awesome success it has become over the years. This evening and the beginning of a great 23 football season, my guest is the adorable, vivacious Angela Banzoff. Welcome, Angela. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Angela is our Booster Club president. I'm going to let you tell us, though, how we can join or volunteer for this program. Yes, so we always are looking for community partnerships, sponsorships. They can reach out to me at vbfootballboosters at gmail.com. As far as parents that have kids playing on the team, we have a volunteer list. We're always looking for more parents to help out with serving the meals, helping, um, you know, with field crew, different things like that. And really, just our community is just amazing because so much of the support comes from the same sponsors we've had year after year, but yet every season we also add to that. Um, I know this year we have six new sponsors and it's just amazing to see the community involvement. Well, we've always called 12th man in the huddle. That's our people up in the stands. And I think without them, I'm not sure we would be quite so successful. So we give kudos to them. So uh, give us some numbers. Give us your um, email, how they can get uh, a hold of someone to um, to volunteer, to be actually, um, and know what to do. Yes, you also can always follow us on social media. We have a Facebook page and an Instagram page, and it's just Vero Beach Football. So find us there. We like to make announcements there a lot. Um, as far as getting on the volunteer list, you can email me at vbfootballboosters at gmail.com. And you can also go to VeraBeachFootball.com, our main website, and that has all of the information as well. VBFootballBoosters at gmail.com or go to our website, VeraBeachFootball.com. And they can always use the help because they do a lot for this team. And um, I think that's why uh, the coaches love the Booster Club. And enjoy the, um, the camaraderie and be a part. That's what this community is all about on Friday night. What a pleasure to talk with you, Angela. We are so lucky to have you working with this team. Um, you have given out the numbers, and if they want to, they can call the high school also. Mm -hmm. One other thing that I do want Angela to touch on was the summer programs they had. Yes, yeah, so our team and our coaching staff worked so hard all summer, and they not only had summer workouts, we traveled to camps, 
there was a seven on seven team that traveled to different colleges. They went um, places, they, they went all the way up to Gainesville and Tallahassee. They went to my alma mater, to Auburn, and they just went all over and really got some good workouts in. And then we took the team to FCA camp in Ave Maria. And that was an amazing few days where the team really got to, you know, not only get closer to their faith and become closer teammates. And it was just great. We, um, the booster board had several parents travel with the team and we got to be there to, to witness that. And it was just a really great few days. And, you know, the coaches, I can't even tell you how much the coaches put in during the summer in this crazy heat and the, the hours and hours of time they put with these kids is amazing. I know, Angela, I was just saying um, kudos to these coaches and players who have persevered through this heat to give us a winning season. That's a lot of character. That speaks highly of all of them and the parents mm -hmm. that make sure they get there. What a pleasure to talk with you, Angela. We are so lucky to have you working with this team. And you know how we end this. And this is going to be this whole year. I'm so excited. Go, Go Fighting, Fighting Indians. Hi, Derek West here from the Genesis Church of Vera Beach. We are proud supporters of Fighting Indians football and Vera Beach athletics. We invite you to join us this Sunday at 915 for our services. If you can't join us in person, please visit us online at gcvero.com. Genesis Church of Vera Beach, place of love where honest men are known and unafraid to love the hardest, hardest home. Visit us at gcvero.com. Hi, JW from Barker Air Conditioning. These hot and humid days sure do take a toll on your air conditioning system. Barker Air Conditioning offers our ESA annual or semi-annual maintenance plans to keep things in good working order. Barker Air Conditioning, servicing Indian River County since 1959. Since 1980, the Village Beach Market has been that local store on the beach filled with friends that always has something for everyone. And we've been fighting Indian fans for generations. From fresh baked goods to prepared foods to chef inspired lunches and dinners, our slogan says it best simply better. We're online at villagebeachmarket.com. And now a new location in Fort Pierce. A septic system is only as good as the installation and maintenance. Reliable Septic is the name known along the coast for being the professionals who install and service these systems for both residential and commercial uses. They'll determine the on-site needs and design considerations for a complete wastewater treatment system. Thanks to Reliable Septic Service. 772-562-4242. The Fighting Indians Halftime Show is brought to you by Genesis Church. Let's join Gary Paris and the voice of the Fighting Indians, Paul Tipton. And welcome back. We're here at the Citrus Bowl in Billy Living's Field. And uh, I'm joined by our superintendent, Dr. David Moore. Dr. Moore, thanks for joining oh, thank us. Thank you for having me. Hey, uh, brand new turf here tonight. And man, what a nice turf it is. I know it's not a cheap investment, nope. but I think it's a worthwhile investment. We've talked to Coach Jankowski about this whole process, but why don't you talk tell us a little, how did this all come about? So we, we had to move games last year, as you know, because of the rain. Last week we were able to have a game, and we would not have been able to have that game with the amount of rain that we had. So we proved the investment on game one on, the, on this field. So uh, state-of-the-art turf, it's not one of those fields that gets hotter because it has the ground-up black tires in it. It is a, a biodegradable, deflects the heat. Great field. It's a, a, a million-dollar field that, that million-dollar athletes play on. Uh, so we figured our kids need the exact same thing. Uh, I yeah, totally yeah, agree. Yeah. You know, obviously one of the big concerns uh, when you start talking about, you know, a lot of people when they talk turf, they think the old AstroTurf, right. which is completely different. And then, of course, you think about the whole concussion protocols and everything that's been going on. But this is actually a very safe turf. It's very comparable to an actual grass turf. Oh, uh, 100%. So last week it was pouring down rain. I saw one kid slip on, on, on the other team. Uh, we actually had to certify the field with a, uh, a, a, a protocol where they came in and tested the field to make sure that if a kid did fall on the field, that they was, it was, had the ability to absorb that pressure, pass with flying cover. So we're, we're, we're excited to have it. We're, it looks beautiful. It, it is exactly what this uh, town deserves. As this process has been going on, I've been asked two questions. When would the turf be ready? 
and what's going to happen with the track. Yes. So what's the story with the track? So you'll, you'll notice uh, there is no track down there, and you'll also notice the exact same company that worked around the clock for the last two weeks to make sure that we were ready for last week have already moved their equipment across over into the Graves Field, and they're setting up to build that track. So we've set a lofty goal to have them ready from graduation to the opening of this game last week to be ready. And the next lofty goal is to be ready for track season. So we're, our goal is to have that track ready for uh, January when, when students start to participate. We are fully funded. The uh, inclusive playground, the Jimmy Graves uh, site, as well as the, the track and field, we're going to have that ready. We're ready to go. We've already taken it to the board, and, and we're going to have that ready to go as well. I know we just got a few minutes before we get to the second half. What other great things are happening around the district right now? Well, we're celebrating great outcomes, and our goal is to continue the, uh, the, the success that we had last year. There's only four districts uh, in the state of Florida that are in a better place today than they were before the pandemic. Indian River County is, is one of those counties. So we've seen great success. We have great teachers, committed families and parents, uh, and we're making it happen here in our district. All right, Dr. Moore, thanks Thank for stopping for by me. here. I appreciate and, uh, it. Folks, we'll get to the second half action of Vero Beach Northwestern right after this. Thank you. Hi, JW from Barker Air Conditioning. These hot and humid days sure do take a toll on your air conditioning system. Barker Air Conditioning offers our ESA annual or semi-annual maintenance plans to keep things in good working order. Barker Air Conditioning, servicing Indian River County since 1959. HBS Glass is a proud supporter of Fighting Indians Athletics and Christian FM. Since 1973, HBS Glass has served homeowners, architects, and contractors in the Vero Beach area. HBS Glass offers hurricane impact windows and doors. HBS Glass, 722 Third Place or hbsglass.com. Thanks to HBS Glass. Back here at the Citrus Bowl, and we're just about ready to get the second half underway. Gary, uh, quickly, your thoughts on that first half of play? Yeah, I thought it was a hard-fought first half, and I thought that the opportunities came our way early and penalties, and, and we didn't capitalize on the situation at that time, allowed them to get some momentum, and they've been able to capitalize. They get the ball to start here. Bill Mott is an excellent defensive coordinator. He knows he's got things he's got to work out here. Lenny knows that they've got to get time to allow their quarterback to throw the ball. While we have a second, a second let's get down to the sideline, start with the defense first. We check in with Derek West. Derek, what's the story? Guys, GT and I purposely kind of went into the locker room a little bit later because we didn't know what to expect, but I was impressed and I was kind of encouraged by just listening to Coach Mata talk about simple things. Guys, it's the simple things. It's looking at the ball, not trying to anticipate the snap count, looking at the ball, watching the ball, staying in your lanes. Don't get sucked inside when you have an angle on the play. Just small things, and if we clean these up guys they really feel like they can uh, do well in the second half so I look for us to really uh, improve on, on on our assignments and our discipline in the second half all right thank you Derek uh, let's check in offensively GT what coach Jay have to say coach Jay looked at everyone on the offense from the linemen to the receivers to the quarterback and he said guys we've got to win every play one-on-one, -on -one, your man. He goes, they're just playing us man up. So it's man-on-man. -man. We've got to win the one-on-one. -on -one. Then if you win the one-on-one, -on -one, win every play. And if you win that play, then you stack some plays together. And that's the only way we're going to win. we got to stack a lot of wins together in this second half. He said, I don't know who it is amongst you right now, but there's somebody in this locker room that's going to step up and that's going to win this game. So which one of you is going to be that guy? I don't know who it is, but I'm challenging you, which one of you is going to do it? Win the second half, win each play. Let's take a look at the Derby's heating and cooling first half stats. Total yardage for both teams equaled 120 yards, although the score favors Northwestern 13 to 6. The breakdown is this. For Northwestern on the ground, a total of 13 yards through the air, 107 yards. Posey is 5 of 13 for 84 yards and a touchdown. Strawdard is 1 for 2 for 23 yards. For Vero Beach, on the ground, 69 yards. Jonathan Hillsman, four carries, 19 yards. Tyler Aronson's got six for 44 yards. Osby, only three for five. Through the air, 51 yards. Five of 14 for Tyler Aronson for 51 yards and a touchdown. Roberts has got two catches for seven yards. Torres has got one for 45. 
Simons has got one for negative four, and Hillsman's got one for three yards in the touchdown. Verrill had eight first downs in that first half of play, two turnovers, though, and eight penalties for a total of 65 yards. The Bulls had six first downs, one turnover, and 13 penalties in that first half of play. But the biggest stat line so far in this first half is the score, 13-6 in favor of Northwestern. So Northwestern will get the ball to start this second half of play. We'll see if Vero Beach's defense can make the adjustments necessary to slow down the Bulls, who seem to have found something late, Gary, in the second quarter. Well, they <clears throat> what they've been able to do is what take advantage of situations. The opportunities were there. Their ability, they're very athletic. They were able to cut back, and our guys were not in good positions to make the tackles, as Coach Mata said. Hey, you guys have got to stay in your lanes. You guys have got to watch the ball, find the ball, and we got to work on that here the second half. Vero gets set to kick off, going to squib it, and they're going to uh, call an offsides on Vero. Well, that, that yeah. Yeah. They, I don't even... It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's an offsides, move them back five yards, and let's kick it. And the problem is we don't have the kicker that they have in Aller. You know, our kicker does not have that strong leg, so he's got to do pooches, he's got to do squib kicks, and um, and that's what the, you know, we tried to, we tried to squib kick that time. But here's your problem, Paul. What did you, did the guys say? We're not focusing on the ball. Right. You have got to know you can't jump off sides on that play. You've got to stay on your side until the ball's made contact with. Another comfort zone AC heating and cooling penalty. This time, Lewis is going to go deep to the 20, 25, the return to the 30, to the 35, down to about the 37. So Northwestern, who's leading by seven, gets this ball to start the third quarter, and they'll start around their own 37-yard line. Battle of heavyweights. You knew this was going to be an interesting matchup. When it being this so early in the season, you just had no clue what would really happen. Hey, you, you know, you're right. It's a, uh, you know, opening game, and... Uh... For the regular season, uh, I, I just saw one score where the Titans of... Uh, yeah, they're playing Osceola tonight. Playing Osceola. Treasure Coast, and they're beating them 22 to 8 at half. Gun again, go with five wide. Now the receiver's going to drop back into the running back position. That's Glover. And now the other movement. Well, yeah, that'll be five yards back on the Bulls. And the right tackle is saying to the quarterback, you know, we go on the hut. We go on that sound. You put the guy in motion. There was a one of the receivers. He took off in motion, and your right tackle jumped back. You know, one of the things I've noticed, Gary, is that Adrian Posey, he's pretty animated on that. Oh, uh, he you know, does a great job. Not, quick pass underneath, and, boy, that was a quick slant into Glover that goes incomplete. Well, I, I tell you, great job by uh, Aiden Smith for getting over there in time. He was shifting over there to that position. That was the open slant right there was where the vacant hole was because mm -hmm. Aiden was getting over there. The quarterback read that, but Aiden, once he made the throw, Aiden was there to make the hit. We're just getting started in this third quarter. It's a 13-6 lead for Northwestern over Vero Beach. Paul, Gary, GT, Derek, Don here tonight, season opener. Two heavyweights going at it here at the Citrus Bowl. Second and 15, Strotter now back at quarterback. Pressured out of the pocket. He's got some room to run, 35, 40, 45, diving for the first down mark. And there again, you get a guy out of position or you've got a position, a chance to make a sack right there. Instead, they get a first down. Nobody was in that gap or that side of the ball. I'm not saying that there's, but they didn't overreact, but they somebody needs to be able to stay home. Going to go tempo, trying to go screen pass out to the right side. 
It's caught ahead for about a four-yard gain. Now, what's the, what are they stopping the whistle for? I'm not sure. There's a penalty flag, I believe, down there on the other side. I don't think that's a flag. Yeah, it is. I think it is. Maybe our guys over there can tell us something. I don't know. There's a flag, it looks like to me. Oh, it's going to go against Northwestern, whatever it is. I think they said procedure. Uh, it may have had they two may, guys motion yeah, at the same I time. I agree. Yeah, they, they got to the line pretty quick and tried to speed it up. So it'll be a first and 15 coming up for Northwestern. I tell you what, Strader has gives them a little more speed at quarterback, and he gets the ball out there very quick. They like this five wide look. Strader, pressure, trying to step up into the pocket. He shakes off one tackle. Now he's got a receiver wide open. That's Glover to the 35. And it becomes almost like Sandlot football. Now they're called a flag on a late flag coming in. I believe they're going to call that on Alford on a late hit. But I, I, I'm going to tell you that, again, the quarterback bought the time yeah. to allow the receiver to get open. When he scrambles, it becomes very much like Sandlot football, and it is a breakdown. Personal First foul. First foul against Vero Beach. Yeah. So they're going to tack on 15 to that. That'll put them all the way down to the 20-yard line of Vero Beach. And there are certain things you just can't do, and you got to play more discipline than that to take these personal fouls, penalties. Vero needs a break here. Needs a turnover of some kind. Strotter with an empty backfield. At the 20-yard line of Vero Beach, first down and 10. They're leading by seven. Screen pass right side. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Griffin with a major hit. Absolutely. And he hung on to the ball, too. And that helped us even more because that's a loss. Wow. Now, that was a big-time hit right there. As Griffin comes That's a flying four or up five there, five-yard loss on the play. That's two-two. And Griffin coming up from that safety or corner position there, and just laying the wood. Wow! You need some plays like that to help you in a game like this. Right now, it's close. Now you need to keep some plays. Second and fourteen. Pushed back to the twenty-four. Roll out to the left. Fire looking for the corner. It's caught. Touchdown. That is Calvin Russell. Got a flag on the play. Let's check the penalty. Russell, the 6'5", 181-pound sophomore, and a holding. Holding. Holding call. Well, I tell you what, they made that look real easy on that play. He goes, big tall kid goes up, makes that catch. Then the break is there was a holding call on the play for Vero Beach. Big break right there. 9.45, second, or excuse me, third quarter. And that takes points off the board for Northwestern. Maybe the break that Vero Beach needs. I tell you, you, you got to come up with a big play because you feel like they're starting to get into rhythm on anything they want to do now. Second down and a long way to go for Northwestern. Backed up to the 34. Strotter, he's looking down the sideline. It was a go route for his receiver on the right side, and it's incomplete. Now they saw man to man. They were in a press. Bureau was like in a press coverage on that side. You saw their coach Griffin Harris with, Griffin with good coverage over there, and uh, the, he does a great job. Oh, excuse of, me, that's Reynolds. Reynolds over there. Mar Reynolds stayed with him all the way, stride for stride on that play. Brings up third and long. Big down right here. Just a huge yep. down. Third and twenty-four. 
Make them use a timeout if they have to early. I'd... A little shifting around. Play clock. They're going to have to take a timeout. Play clock was down at three seconds. Yep, Coach Harris is going to take a timeout here. 9.39 left in the third quarter. It's a third and 24 when we come back. Christian FM can put this game on the radio thanks to the support of businesses like Chuck Bateman State Farm Insurance in Vero Beach. Chuck's goal is to create an atmosphere where customers can talk about what's important to them. He's also a huge supporter of our local chapter of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Chuck's phone is 567-1106 or chuckbatemaninsurance.com. Cafe 66, located on US 1, just south of 8th Street. At Cafe 66, our breakfast menu is all about variety. From biscuits and gravy, to country fried steak and eggs, to Nutella stuffed French toast. Our lunch and dinner menus have something for everyone. From barbecue platters, to unique burgers. Our hours online at Cafe66Vero.com. We proudly support the Fighting Indians. Every Tuesday night, you can join us at Caps Pizza for Coach's Corner. Gary Paris, Coach Jankowski, and myself, we're there at 6 o'clock to talk about Indians football. And by the way, if you do want to ask a question, you can send it to us by email. It's vnncomments at gmail.com. That's vnncomments at gmail.com. And, uh, hey, by the way, if we use your question, we'll put you in a drawing for a family dinner thanks to Caps Pizza. Calvin Russell, their big wide receiver, is asked to leave because his mouthpiece. Third and 24. Strotter, pressure coming. Bacon all over him. Strotter throws it on his back foot, and it falls incomplete. Bacon, Alford. Rivers, or excuse me, Montgomery, all there, and Montgomery still down on the turf. Man, I would have loved the sack, but the quarterback is strong enough to stand in the pocket and throw the ball out of there for the incomplete pass. Got a cramp, it looks like. Yeah. That's the sigh of relief right there. Yes. Oh, there's a flag down. I don't know what the flag would be. Intentional, Intentional grounding. grounding. He, yeah. was, he wasn't out of the he tackle box. He wasn't out of the tackle box. And there was that, nobody around there. That makes it. That makes our down. We get the ball. It was fourth down, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was going to be ours anyway. Or no, excuse me. It was third down. Yeah. I did in, in high school ball now. You can if you get outside the tackle pocket, you can throw it like he did. Yeah. And in that one, I wasn't sure where he was located, but he was inside the pocket. But it should be loss of down. It is. Yeah. There we go. I was watching the. So that has backed them all the way up to the other side of the 50-yard line to their 47-yard line. This is where you'd love to see a big play on a punt return. Aller, wow, high towering punt. And now flag's going to come in. Yeah, 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 there was a <laughs> like a tackle going on by Northwestern on one of our coverage guys. <laughs> so. so we should get 10 yards. Well, Gary, could this be the point of a momentum swing? It, it, it is a um, it is a time for it. Yes, we defense did a good job. Uh, they call him Vero B. They're calling it on us? Uh, they're saying Vero held. How do you hold? Okay. I guess when you're returning it, you're right. So that'll back us up to the 10. So, all right. Well, you need a 90 yard big play here. 90 yards. You need a 90 yard drive. That's, that's really it. what you want. Uh, well, that's what you, you know? want a 90 yeah. yard drive. 
I don't mean to. I meant to say a. 90 well, we've yard. seen it before. <laughs> yeah, but I want to see a ninety-yard drive. Nine twenty-three, third quarter. It's a thirteen-six lead for Northwestern. Handoff up the gut by Hillsman to the twenty. Still on his feet, twenty-five. Oh man, he was just about to break loose. That gets you out of trouble real quick. Yeah, it does. Gut check time for Vero. You're down by seven. It's only the third quarter, but this is a big drive. Aronson looking to throw. Firing, looking for his receiver, and it's over his head, out of bounds, incomplete. He was looking for Torres. Yeah, Torres was running the route down the sideline on a wheel route a little bit, but good coverage there downfield. He just couldn't get the ball in there. And, and again, the quarterback has to make his decision. Mm -hmm. And he, he he threw that. He thought it, that he was going to get open on that play. Put it in a good spot, though. Yes, he Either did. Either Torres was catching that or nobody. Second down. Play action. Fires. What a catch by Roberts to the 42. Wow. Fake on the handoff. Play action fake. And then Roberts runs a kind of a deep slant in there and makes a beautiful fingertip catch. Got a little momentum going here. Good job by Isaiah Roberts on that catch. Good throw by Tyler. Got Velcro hands there. Isaiah Roberts to the Vero 42. First and 10. Trips to the left. Firing down the left side. Looking for his receiver. He's good. And looking for Torres over there. And good coverage. Yeah, there was nobody. There was no way he was going to beat that defender on that play. That was a, a good job by Mentes. Mentes. Mentes does a good job of staying with him and shutting him down. Second down and 10. But I like the vertical. I like going up every now and then. A check to the sideline. Play clock's at 15. Trips left side. Tyler, handoff. Hillsman, right side. Stutter step, get to the 50, to the 45. And a big hit from behind. Brings Hillsman down inside the 40. Yeah, good job blocking outside by E.J. White. The wide receiver does a nice job of getting, and there's another flag in this game. The Hillsman has an 18-yard gain, Paul, but I don't know what the penalty is. It came flying up. It's against Northwestern. Yeah. I guess a sideline warning. I've never seen that motion before. That he it's did. a 15-yard penalty. About so three that times. puts the ball down to the 25-yard line. Now, Coach Harris wants to know, have an explanation here on some things. So he's got the official over there. Next week, we've got Palm Beach Gardens here at the Citrus Bowl. Playoff team a year ago. The Garden Gators will be here to take on your Fighting Indians. Game time, 7 o'clock. We'll get things started with countdown to kickoff beginning at 6 p.m. Hey, you gotta, you got to like the way these officials are throwing it on both sides. It's not just one team. Handoff. Hillsman working off the right side. Pushes his way for a couple. Got a little bit good surge that time by the offensive line, especially in this quarter here, this drive. Yeah, Gary, they're, they're liking right now, working behind Santos and Smith over on that right side. 8-12, third quarter, 13-6 lead for Northwestern on second down and nine. Swing pass to Hillsman. Trying to get down to the sideline, and he will get inside the 15. Uh, he's down around first and 10 or first and 12 now. What a little wheel route that was. Yeah. Nice one right there. Good route. Good job by EJ taking his man inside. 
Going to see Osby check into the ball game for Vero. Trips to the left side on first and 10 at the 12. Inside the red zone, Curran family as Osby gets inside the 10 before he stopped. So the Curran Floor and Company red zone has Vero Beach at the 10 yard line now, or it's second down. Clock continues to roll here in the third quarter as we hit 7.40 remaining. 13-6 lead for Northwestern. Vero Beach now at the nine. Twins on either side. Hillsman back in. In the backfield with Aronson. Tyler spins back to his right, looking downfield, trying to run it. Stays on his feet, and he'll go out of bounds. I, I'm not sure what that play was. I know he rolled out to his right, and I, I didn't see any receiver open on the play. Loses three on the play. Third down here situation, and again, with the kicking situation being the way it, it has been, you're going to go two downs here. So that ball will be back to the 12-yard line. Barrel Beach going to line up, trips to the left side. Aronson, swing pass for Hillsman. Hillsman trying to turn it upfield. He'll get back to about the nine-yard line. Uh, they tried that same little wheel route again, mm -hmm. and uh, he was able to catch it, but now it's fourth down, and you're about the, what, the five-yard line? No, you're at the 10. I mean the 10, rather. Excuse yeah. me, the 10. He can still get a first down. Yes, you can get a first down. Touchdown sounds a lot better. Absolutely. Barrow's going to line up with three receivers spread left, one to the right. Aronson fakes, handoff, right side, Roberts, and he stepped out of bounds, so they'll turn it over on downs. Hey, give credit where credit's due right there. They did a good job yeah, of, uh, Northwestern did, of yeah. shutting us down in the red zone down there. And, uh, again, it's, uh, they got a tremendous speed. And, you know, Lenny told us at the, at the Caps the other night on the coach's corner that this team has got a lot of speed. Mm -hmm. Well, we saw, we've been seeing that all night. They're very, very talented. The secret here is that you're still in the game naturally, but you've got to get a pick or a turnover here some way, somehow. Absolutely. So they'll spot it at the 13-yard line where it'll be first down and 10, and they're going to take a water break timeout here in the seven-minute mark. We'll do the same as well. This is Fodding Indians football. Cafe 66, located on US-1, just south of 8th Street. At Cafe 66, our breakfast menu is all about variety. From biscuits and gravy, to country fried steak and eggs, to Nutella stuffed French toast, our lunch and dinner menus have something for everyone. From barbecue platters, to unique burgers. Our hours are online at cafe66vero.com. We proudly support the Fighting Indians. This is Fighting Indians Football, brought to you by Central Assembly. Paul Tipton, Gary Parrish, G.T. Parrish, Derek West, and Don Dexter here tonight, season opener. Merrill Beach hosting Miami Northwestern, where it's seven minutes remaining in the third quarter. And it's a 13-6 lead for Northwestern. Merrill Beach able to get down to the nine-yard line. They started from their own 10, but could not get it into the end zone. Turnover on downs, and Northwestern will start from their own 13. Strotter, keeper, up the gut, 20-25. Still on his feet to the 27. There you go. When you see a quarterback do that, what they've done, that's a play they called from the booth. They say, hey, take a snap, look back, make a move like you're going to throw the ball, and then take off and run. There's a, been a seam right up the middle. Picked up 14 on that carry. Strotter, again, keeper, trying to bounce out this time. Vero just stacking him up. Boy, he will not go down. Good strength by Strotter. 
But Vero just kept coming and coming. I think he got a very favorable mark on that. But it'll be a loss on the play. It'll be second down and about 15. Yeah, again, what's happening is the Indians are pulling out a linebacker out of the middle, and they're seeing that. Mm -hmm. When they go wide or putting guys wide, there was nobody there in that one except they, they pinched really good, and Rivers does a good job of getting in there to help. Second down and 15 to the at the 23. Strotter. He's going to let it fly. Looking for his receiver. Finds Russell and out of bounds for a first down at midfield. I'm telling you, they, they're having a hard time covering him. He is just... Just a big, tall kid. Six five. Six foot five, and and he just jumps up and just takes that ball right out of the air. Picked up twenty six. First and ten. Clocks at five forty four left in the third quarter. Strotter flushed out. Let's it fly, has a receiver wide open at the 35. Turns it up to the 30. When you've got guys that can give you time, and that time he had time to, he, he dodged a couple blitz uh, stunts, and he was able to get time, and his receivers worked away to get open. Good job by them. And I tell you what, Strotter has really turned into a fantastic young quarterback right now to, in this game. Spotted at the 29, first down and 10. Strotter looking to set up a screen underneath. Oh, my goodness. It could have been intercepted. Aiden Smith, I mean, it hit him right in the numbers. He wasn't even looking well, for it. He was going to watch his man make the – he really had his eyes focused on the, the receiver, which you, if he if he does, doesn't – I mean, I got to say this. His eyes should be on the receiver going after the ball. Yeah, yeah. That was the quarterback just threw it and hit him. But boy, woulda and coulda would have so been. So depending nice. on what fan you are, your one fan's going, "Wow, we dodged a bullet." The other fan's going, "Whoa, we missed an opportunity." Yeah. Second and ten at the twenty-nine. Strotter going with a slant pass. Yes! And it's incomplete. Intercepted off the deflection. Yeah. Elijah Anderson, Xbox. Boy, you talk about a big play when you needed it. Right there was it. Right there was that interception. Now the Indians have got to, to come back here and get themselves in this game again. Yep. Get him a score. Get right back in. Let's go to the fourth quarter tied up. Let's go to the fourth quarter. You know what I mean? Let's get a battle for the fourth quarter. <laughs> Two big heavies going at it. Let's Put it at the 19. First down and 10. Five twenty-four, third quarter, 13-6, Northwestern lead. Handoff. Ooh, good tackle. Got to the 20. One-yard gain. Hillsman looked like he was just about ready to kick it in gear when he got caught. Yeah, he had uh, Sedoni Gay come up and made that hit. I mean, I really thought he was going to make a move, and uh, he would have been off. Twin receivers on either side for second down. Tyler looking. Fires. He's going to just throw this one away. Well, he's he's asking them, hey, guys, somebody come back and help me. I can't throw the ball. I'm on the run that time. He's got two wide receivers. He's got Taylor and White running down side by side. Yeah. He needs somebody to stop and help him. If one of them would have pulled up and came back, there would have been a, shot, a throw right there. You yeah. that's, that's what I'm trying to say is that you got to help your quarterback out. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Third down. Vero really needs to get this first down. Pressure coming. Pressure coming. 
Trying to set up the screen. There it is. Hillsman stays on his feet. 30. Race time. 50. 40. 30. 20. 10. And out of bounds near the 5. You saw, you saw the speed of them to catch up with him on that. The speed right there by catching it. What a great catch. What a great move. Good job blocking by our guys. Then here comes Hillsman. He's, he turns it on. Now, they're, one of their fastest guys comes all the way across, had the angle on him, and got him at about the 8-yard line. 71-yard catch and run for Jonathan Hillsman. Tight formation. Center. You know, penalty's going to stop this. Well, there's our comfort zone, AC heating penalty. Who are they calling the penalty on? Uh, it's going to be against Northwestern. Too many men in the Too many men in the, the huddle. Oh, it's, it's hard or enough on to. on the field one on way or the, the other. Yeah, we don't really well, do a lot of huddles anymore. It, it, it's hard enough to beat them with uh, 11. 12 makes it even more tougher. Yeah, yeah true that. <laughs> so the ball inside the five to the four. And penalty's going to stop another one. Did he come off? <laughs> no. Still 12. So half the distance, that'll put it into two. Wow. So another comfort zone AC and heating penalty. Somebody's got to come off. I like do it again the third time. Yeah, no kidding. Well, the, after that, it doesn't matter much because he's only moved just a smudge. <laughs> it's just a little bit. Well, we're on the two-yard line right now. Inside the ball's inside the two. First and goal, the two. Handoff. Osby trying to push his way forward. And he's short. He's going to be about inside the one yard line on the play. You got three more downs to do it. Now they're bringing in the receivers out of, on this game, on this play. Shift of some personnel here. Go back yeah. to our traditional offense here. Yeah. Now you spread them out. Now you spread out the yeah, yeah. Uh, defense. Yep. He's going to take, he wants to take time out with one second. Play clock's no. at seven. Handoff. Osby, left side. Osby trying to fight for it, and he didn't get it. Yeah, he did. Now you got third and two. Fourth down and two, brother. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Three. It should be yeah, third down. It should down. be third down. It's what I got. Third down. It should be third down. Yeah, Here it's it is. third down over it's there. It's third down, yeah. Tyler going to hand off. No, keeper rolling out to his right. He's going to try to run it in. Touchdown oh, and a big the hit. There's a big flag right there. Two-yard run. Two-yard run for Tyler Aronson. Now decision time, Gary. Kick or go for two. Well, it depends on how my condition my quarterback's in. Yeah, I don't think he's got up yet. Has he come over? Oh, yeah. He's fine. Oh, he's fine. Okay, he's we're fine. being told he's fine. All right, here they're going to go. They're going to do the miss. The, uh, yeah, they're going to go extra point. Going extra point. This is a huge kick, and I'm not going to say a word this time like I did against uh, <coughs> Treasure Coast last year when that one just snuck its way through and got in. Glad you're not going to say anything. No, I'm not. I'm letting you do it. Jesse Lewis out to try to put an extra point on. Now they'll they'll attack that uh, attack the penalty on the kickoff probably. But you know, Gary, there would be an opportunity here if you could take it now. Wouldn't you take it and try to make it over too? It's a dead ball. Oh, okay, it was already so you scored. can't do it. Yeah. He got a. 
And he got ejected, too. That's big. That's big for Northwestern because that could be pretty much half the season right there. That's, I think, a minimum six weeks. Yeah, it is. Six, six. I think they can appeal it. Yeah, but, but I, yeah. you appeal that. What are they going to look at and say? Well, well, I'm just saying, you can appeal. Yeah, now, you can. Whether you or not can. They'll, they'll accept the yeah. appeal. I think the officials did a good job, not because he's virile, but he did. they did a good job of spotting that and called it immediately. Mm-hmm. Well, it's pretty obvious. Well, it was obvious, <laughs> I realize. But but so was the holding penalty over there earlier. But. Yeah, well, they, they got that one right. They may have missed that one over there. All right, so I think they finally got this all sorted out. Bands off the holder. Hall the long snap. High snap. The kick is up, and it is good. Tie ball game. Three minutes to go, third quarter. We're knotted up at 13. Christian FM thanks Paris Family Chiropractic for their support. Dr. Matt Paris is a longtime resident of Vero Beach and a former quarterback for the Fighting Indians. Just like our Fighting Indians work hard for the win, Dr. Paris works hard for a patient's well-being. From proper alignment to good nutrition, Dr. Paris helps patients achieve the win. Paris Family Chiropractic, when the spine is in line, everything is fine. 299-4649 or parisfamilychiro.com. Durfee's Heating and Cooling, a longtime friend and supporter of Christian FM. Durfee's Heating and Cooling offers air conditioning repairs, maintenance, and new installations. Family owned and operated, serving the Treasure Coast area. Durfee's Heating and Cooling, 772-971-5884. Score is 13 all, thanks to the two-yard run by Tyler Aronson. That drive, 81 play, 81 yards, six plays. And Tyler running it in from two yards out. Jesse Lewis with the extra point. And we're at 13 all. The scoring drive brought to you by McCall Insurance Agency. And with the penalty, the kickoff now will be at the 45. And Lewis will put it into the end zone for the touchback. And that is uh, for Northwestern, 12 defensive penalties on the night so far. I promise you, Coach Harris will not be excited about that at all. All right, so now, Gary, defense with a takeaway on the last possession by the Bulls. Well, they've had a couple good breaks. They have. Uh, they've had a where they, they should be. Their legs should be a little fresher now, a little, even though you're into the into the third period, but you're you're still they would they have not been out on the field for the last four well it was up there one time they turned and stopped it. Strotter back at quarterback first down and ten at the twenty. He's looking to throw. Pump fakes pressure coming and he's going down. Defense is fired up and I'm surprised that he that, that they haven't brought Posse back in, or Posey rather, back in. Yeah, I am too, Gary. But they certainly, they felt like they found something yeah. with Strotter being able to run in yeah. that five wide package. Yeah, you take a senior and versus a, 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 a sophomore and experience starts to catch up. Now they've dug a hole here, but you now you, we do see uh, Posey coming back in. Bacon with his second sack of the night. Loss of eight for the Bulls. Posey back in at quarterback. Posey looking, firing. What a cannon. And it goes incomplete. Now they, they were looking to run a little wheel route on the right side. Yeah. And they had an open. They had the receiver open. I mean, it was like a it could miss one right through his hands. So the Bulls now looking at a third down and 19 from their own 11. Oh, 
Posey still in at quarterback. Need a big defensive play here, Paul. Yes, we do. They're going to go man-to-man out here, and they're going to watch him try to hit the big guy on the outside. Posey is trying to set up a screen underneath. Good pursuit by the Indians. Minimal gain. Brings up fourth down. They're going to punt it. Yep. Gain of four. We'll get to the 15-yard line. Clock's ticking here late in the third quarter. 143. We're tied at 13, and all are for Northwestern out to punt. Been an excellent punter tonight for them as the, as the kickoffs and punting. Roberts back deep for Vero, standing on the Bulls' 45. Now, official's going to... Well, how do they... Oh, he, hey. he's got a mouthpiece problem or something. He... Oh, one of the things that they're they're doing, Gary, the you know the uh, the the plate in the back cannot show. Yes, that's yes. another thing. All are standing on the one yard line, set to punt. Gets a punt away. Not one of his better ones, but it'll take a nice roll right around about the 47-yard line out of bounds. Yeah, I still like a 38, 37-yard line uh, kick, brother. Something of that nature. But bureau has got the ball on the plus side of the 50. So the Indians have got a little momentum going and uh, got good field position here with a minute 10 left to go in the third period. So put it at the 47 of Northwestern. Tyler Aronson, who just ran one in from two yards out to tie this game up at 13. It's back out on the field with the other 10 guys on that offensive unit. Handoff, Hillsman trying to find a hole. Pushes ahead for about a yard and a half to two. I think what he needs to do here, Paul, in my opinion, and I'm not a running back, but you, you, you see that little dancing like they do, like the running back. I think he needs to explode up in there. Agreed. He, last week when he got those really big runs, he hit the hole fast and he hit it hard. This one looks like he's trying to find a, uh, a seam or something. Right. Just fire up in there and get you four yards. Now we see Derek, uh, J, uh, DJ in. Williams in the backfield with Aronson. Trips to the left side on second down and eight. Pressure coming. Aronson's got to get it. Rid of it. He does manage to flick it ahead. Wow. I tell you what. Good and there was a receiver in the area, so and he was out of the tackle box. Yeah. So, you know, just a breakdown that time by the left tackle. Yeah. He just got beat on that play, and you – and he was looking downfield. Now there's a penalty flag downfield too. Hmm. It's going against Northwestern. Wow. I don't know what it is. It was holding probably. It had to be a holding to be a 10 yarder. Just in defensive penalties tonight, Gary, Northwestern's defense has racked up yeah. 95 yards. 19 seconds to go in this third quarter. First down and 10. Hand off to Williams. Oh, wow, did he take a shot after he got through the hole. Pick of about three. That's why you have to run hard up in there. You have got to lower your shoulder. you got to go north and south. You can't dance. And he, you, you, you raised up a little bit, Derek did. And that's the end of the third quarter right there. We are tied at 13 at the end of three. The heavyweight battle continues. The last round is coming up. This is Fighting Indians football. 
Mazzarella's Auto Sales is part of a local business family and their Christian FM supporters. I'm sales manager Mike Mazzarella, and we always strive to offer late model cars and trucks that undergo inspection and service by our high-tech mechanics. We have Jeeps, Rams, Toyotas, Hondas, commercial vehicles, and luxury vehicles. On site, we have our Spanish-speaking sales and financial advisor, Diego Sainz. We also offer our virtual showroom online at mazautosales.com. I'm Chris, Mike's brother. Our family has been serving our community since 1999. Now on the corner, 4th Street in Old Dixie. Hi, J.W. from Barker Air Conditioning. These hot and humid days sure do take a toll on your air conditioning system. Barker Air Conditioning offers our ESA annual or semi-annual maintenance plans to keep things in good working order. Barker Air Conditioning, servicing Indian River County since 1959. This is Fighting Indians Football on the Bureau Nation Network. Brought to you by HBS Glass. Let's join Gary Paris and the voice of the Fighting Indians, Paul Tipton. Now that heavyweight battle is living up to the expectations. It has been back and forth. And going into the fourth quarter, we're tied at 13. Paul, Gary, GT, Derek, and Don here tonight for the season opener. And here we go. Fourth quarter starts with Vero Beach has the ball on second down. Aronson looking to air it out. He's got a receiver in the area. It's oh. caught and then lost. What a hit, and yeah. a flag's going to come out. That was, well, it was a taunting afterwards. He yeah. hit a nice play by the safety, but then he even had some words afterwards, and they got a flag for it. It's 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 what they call that head to helmet, helmet to helmet, and boom, that's what it was right there. That's a personal foul right there. Beautiful, beautiful. Hey, he did everything right except hit him with his helmet with his head. Or helmet to helmet, it would be better to say. Nice throw, nice catch, and a good defensive play, I will say. Uh, it was not a catch. He got he knocked it right out of his hand. Well, it was catch for about a millisecond. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I would have loved three seconds, then got I it. I would, too. <laughs> <laughs> And I was just going to say, we got to start throwing the ball some way, somehow. They're really now, they're biting in on the run. So that'll put the ball at the 12, 13 yard line. I would say to 17. 17, you're right. Aronson looking to go to the other corner there. He's looking for Roberts. Boy, a lot of hand checking there. And there is a flag. Defensive pass interference. And there's two flags. No, that's a yellow mark down there. I keep thinking that didn't come yellow. That's that soccer. <laughs> and that'll mark it up 10 yards. And, and, I, and I tell you what, you can't, you can't grab a guy's jersey. And that's what they've been doing a lot of. Mm -hmm. And they make it too easy for the official to see. It's flagrant at times just by pulling the jersey. So that ball will go to the six, seven yard line. Yeah. First and goal from the seven. And first and goal, that is the Kern Flooring Company red zone alert along with the Hummingbird Care Services first down. We got just 15 seconds into this fourth quarter and Vero Beach looking at a first and goal at the six. Oh, Her Aronson bobbled it, and that was just enough time for the defender to get in there and make a big tackle. Well, on that play right there, he bobbles it, like you said, and loses all the continuity of the play. He, there was none with the running back be able to get there. It was going to be a handoff and to Hillsman, but the ball bounced up and all, and he, uh, he was lucky he hung on to it. No kidding. All right, second and goal. Now we're at the 12. Aronson, keeper, trying to run up the gut. And we'll get to the 10. Two-yard game. Now he's got to come out because his helmet's off. Yep, third down and goal. And here comes White in at quarterback. Mm. I'd have maybe taken my time out and, and get him back. Mm, yeah, well, that's a that's an interesting decision yeah. right there. But you never know, Gary. 
having number 11 back there may not be a bad thing either. Play clock's at nine. I think they. I think that's what they're going to do, Gary. I think they're going to take a timeout. Yep. 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 They had to. They were changing up too many personnel. We'll step aside. Vero Beach looking at a third and goal when we come back. A family business for 25 years, Total Golf Cart supports the fighting Indians and their fans. They're the authorized club cart dealer and love to assist buyers to find the golf cart that best meets their needs. They offer both new and used club cars. And Total Golf Cart also has a full service department at 1140 South US 1 in Vero Beach or at TotalGolfCart.com. Cafe 66. Season opener here at Billy Living's Field in the Citrus Bowl. Vero Beach taking on Northwestern. We're tied at 13. 10 23 to go in the fourth quarter. And Vero Beach is at a third and goal situation at the 10 yard line. Vero Beach forced to take a timeout. They were trying to shift some personnel around. And it may not be the worst thing in the world because that'll allow Tyler Aronson now to come back on the field who had lost his helmet on the previous play. But with the timeout, he's allowed to come back in. Now they got two downs to try to get the... Touchdown. Yeah, a touchdown, but, I mean, they got 10 yards to go. No, they didn't let him come back in. Huh. Well, maybe that was a decision by coach. <laughs> E.J. White in at quarterback with two backs flanking him. E.J. keeping. He's firing. He's looking for a receiver, and it's intercepted. Return to the 5, 10, 15. Still on his feet, 40, 45, 30, 20, 10, 103 yard return. And hold it just for a moment. There is a penalty flag on the 30 back here. It's still a ill-advised throw on that play right there. I'm not knocking EJ so much as as a quarterback. You don't throw it into five or three or four white shirts on that play. That was a just an ill-advised play. What you've got to do, you got two downs. If nobody's open, throw it away. It's, it's, it's easy for me to see that because I've been up in the front <laughs> and I can look at it and see it. I know it's harder for EJ to think about that down on the field, but you can't literally, you've got to have an open receiver. You you live for another play is what I was trying to say. Now, now the offense will leave the field and they come back and, and here we got, we were down there knocking on the door. So the penalty, will obviously be against Northwestern, knocks off the pick six. Well, no, they get the pick six. It's a, it's a, it's after the uh, penalty. And they're putting that ball all the way to the 16-yard line. No, what I'm saying, it, it takes away the touchdown. They still got the pick. Right, right, That's right, right. That's what I meant right. to say, yeah. It's because it's a dead ball foul. It's a turnover. Yeah, it's a turnover. So the offensive unit for Northwestern will come back out. Okay, so yeah, you don't like to see the interception, but okay, maybe this is a break for Vero Beach now with the penalty that wipes off the touchdown. Yeah, well, absolutely. That's one way to look at it right now, too. Never did see the penalty. It was probably an illegal block or. Yeah, that's generally when you see these kind of big plays like that, it's usually like it's a behind the play type of penalty. At the 20, first down and 10. Posey going to hand off. He'll push ahead for about five yards, and one of the Bulls lost their helmet. Looks like the uh, now the difference left tackle or right tackle. The, you saw the running back there, the, their running back. He literally was 
going hard, momentum. He mm -hmm. was driving as hard as he could up into that uh, hole. Nine and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Swing pass going out that way. But, man, what pursuit by Vero Beach. That play goes for a loss. Yeah, good job by Kevin Pollock. Pollock. Was out there, made that play on that. A huge third down play now. Huge third down play here for the Indians. Yeah, the Army commit with a good play for that linebacker spot. I mean, that's, a, that's great. That young man going to the United States Military Academy in West Point. What a what a, an honor and, and, to, and for him to get to play football, too. Third down and eight. And movement. I think they're going to call it on the offense. Yeah, I think it's a false start. It is. Move them back five yards. He bounced back on that play. Just a. It'll be a third and fourteen. They got twenty-two penalties. I think, if I'm, I'm counting right. I believe, that, I believe that's ten on the offense and I think twelve on the defense. Sixteen on the defense. Excuse me. Wow! Wow! Wee. That's the highest I've ever seen by. Well, one let's team. give a shout out to Comfort Zone AC and Heating sponsoring our penalties. They're getting their money's worth tonight. Third and fourteen. Posey looking for a receiver. Flag is down. Off to the races. To the house. It will go. But the flag will probably bring this one back. Wow. Mm. That time, Lanier took it the distance. He did. That's twice he's done it tonight, but that one's coming back. Yeah. They're coming back. You think they got some speed? <laughs> Illegal procedure on the play. Illegal, which meant they had either somebody move or they covered up covered somebody. Up, yeah. What is that, two or three tonight that they've had that they just got called back? Yeah. 8.06, fourth quarter. We're tied at 13. And so far, there's been two opportunities now for Northwestern to take the lead, but a penalty has negated that. Yeah, and the thing about it is, is that, wow. Once they get by us, we don't have anybody that no. can catch them. No. I mean, you got to keep them in front of you because if they get by you. It's look, gone. Katie Barlow. Gone. gone. So from the nine-yard line, third and a mile. They're going with the five-wide set. Posey in at quarterback. Posey looking. He got hit as he was going to throw it. Bacon gets in there and disrupts it. Fourth down. They were running the wheel route on the yeah. outside, and I believe they had a man open. They did. If, they sure if, did. If Matt they, Bacon makes a big play. He makes a huge play, brings up fourth down. They'll have to punt here with eight minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter of this battle of giants. Eight minutes remaining. Fourth quarter, 13 all. And Aller for Northwestern standing seven yards deep into his end zone set to punt. The main thing here is if it's short, let it roll. Oh, yeah. If it's you can get it and run, go, but get a fair catch, but do not fumble it. Penalty to delay a game. Yeah. And now that makes it very interesting now. That's another penalty on them. I mean, they may be closing in on 30 penalties. Yeah, that's like 27 or 28, I think. It's 
So that's going to move them back to the five, four yard line, I believe. Yeah. So now Gary becomes real interesting because the, the front line is a lot closer to the punter. Well, the thing about it is, is too, is that if a bad snap, you can't step back. Right. That's, I mean, the punter is in a situation where he's back. He'll be a yard in front of that end zone yeah, line. Yeah, he's nine yards deep now. Aller gets the punt away. Wow, booming punt. Roberts at the 47. Tried to shake. He stays on his feet to the 40. 35, 30, and, there's a and out of bounds, right there. another flag coming in. Well, that was a penalty against Vero Beach. Yep. It'd be about the 35-yard line. Now another late flag coming in on the sideline. Wow. You can't do these things, guys. you got to stay disciplined. The separates the good teams from the average teams are the ability to keep your cool. The, the mm. penalty was a good call. He got he, It was a block in the back. I don't know what happened on the sideline over there. That was definitely a, a late hit out of bounds. Let's go down. Derek, Derek, I know you're right there. What'd you see? About five yards out of bounds. Their, their player, their 37, I believe, just hit our guy. Uh, he was about five yards out of bounds, so that was a good call. It's kind of shaking up on the play right now. I'm so on. now they got a market back then they got to mark it back the other way what are they doing right there i don't understand the the where the ball is right now did his knee go down or what i thought it did at first come on all right so I mean, wow. I tell you little, what, I'm confused. Yeah, I'm you and all of us. <laughs> it's a little uh, I mean, chaotic at the moment here. Somebody's got to mark the 15 yards. This, this, at least this officiating crew is talking to one another yeah. and trying to get it right. I mean, the hands are pointing in all directions, but at least they're trying to get it right. Well, we'll see what uh, they ultimately do here. Is it, could it be offsetting penalties, Gary? I, I don't know. I think it could be, yes. We did block in the back. They had an unsportsmanlike mm -hmm. conduct, but why would it be there? Why wouldn't it be up there where the ball, where oh, they. Here they go now. And I'll spot that at the 31-yard line. Now they'll. And I think that's where they're going to leave it. And now they're going to come over and talk to Coach Harris. Coach Harris is like, come on, guys. You know, he's talking at the officials. His words were, come on. All right, so Vero's got the ball. If it stays, it's if at it the stays, 31. Yeah, I mean, I'm. Continue to discuss some things. Maybe we can get something from the guys on the sideline can tell us what's happening out there. Huh. You know, guys, there's a lot of confusion down here. They're, they're, they're trying to figure out, like you said, at least this staff is talking together, trying to get the right call, but there is a lot of confusion down here. And I guess they've come okay. to the conclusion that they're going to leave it right there at the 31-yard line. So with 7.49 to go in the game, Indians are tied with Northwestern 13-13 to -13 and had the ball on the 31-yard line. All right. Well, while we have this uh, break, this intermission, if you will, uh, Gary and I will be at Caps on Tuesday night for Coach's Corner. Coach Jankowski will join us. 6 p.m. is when that gets underway. And, uh, hey, if you want to ask any of us 
but specifically Coach Jankowski, a question about the program, about this game, or any of those kind of things, uh, you can send it to us by email. The email address is vnncomments at gmail.com. That's vnncomments at gmail.com. And uh, if we choose your question for the night, you know, go into a drawing, and at the near the end of the season, we're going to select somebody who's going to get a, a nice little family dinner from Caps Pizza. Yes, but do not text us and ask us anything about the officials. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I think they got to go back 10 yards. Well, what are they doing? To, and again, I don't know why the ball <laughs> is there. Well, you know what, Gary? I, I, I mean, it I just, would, it's going to be where it's going to be, and I just assume let's get this game moving. Coach, yeah. I, you know, when when it well, when it, when it happened knee, in real time, I really thought his knee was down. Okay. Now I can't see it from totally from this angle. Then but it's a dead ball right there. Correct. But the 15 yards, the holding had nothing to do with the play then. Correct. Then the right out of bounds. All right, let's check in with GT. Okay, so what they've gotten together is, and you guys said it right. They went back. They confirmed with each other. What they're saying is that his knee was down. So. Both calls were dead ball calls because they said they blew the whistle. Now, none of us heard the whistle down here, so I'll, I'll let them figure that out. But that's what they're saying is that it was a dead ball on both sides because his knee was down. Okay. First down and 10 from the 46. Handoff. Osby, right side. And Osby gets close to the 40. Now, you want to run as much of this clock as you possibly can. Next week, Palm Beach Gardens for week two will visit the Citrus Bowl. Game time at 7 p.m. Our coverage begins with countdown to kickoff at 6 p.m. As we hit 7.20 left in the quarter. Handoff again, Osby, right side. There's, Plows his way for another couple. That's the way I like to see him run right there, even though he got tackled, but he picks up positive yards. He picks up about... Three to four yards. Now it's third down and about three to go here. He needs another one of them power runs up there. Get that first down. The ball is at the 38-yard line. It'll be a third and two for Vero. We're tied at 13, 644 and counting, fourth quarter. Another handoff, Osby, right side, and he got, he first got a first down, down yeah. to the 45, or excuse me, 35. So now, first down. Yeah, they're going to give it to him, yeah. They were signaling it, yeah, first down. Actually spotted at the 46-yard line. Now they're going to take a water break. Or 36-yard line. After all that timeout we've been <laughs> taking. We got a water break. Six and a half to go. Water break timeout. We're tied at 13. Hi, JW from Barker Air Conditioning. These hot and humid days sure do take a toll on your air conditioning system. Barker Air Conditioning offers our ESA annual or semi-annual maintenance plans to keep things in good working order. Barker Air Conditioning, servicing Indian River County since 1959. Thanks to Longevity Rehab Centers in Vero Beach and Sebastian, owned by locals whose mission is to help heal those who are hurting with a goal of getting them back to a productive life. Longevity Rehab has built a reputation of trust with their clients from the top down, offering both physical and massage therapy designed to restore, relieve, or maintain a healthy lifestyle. Blue Cross Blue Shield, Humana, Cigna, United Healthcare, Health First, Medicare, and most insurances are accepted. LongevityRehab.com. This is Fighting Indians Football on the Bureau Nation Network, brought to you by HBS Glass. Let's join Gary Paris and the voice of the Fighting Indians, Paul Tipton. Thanks for joining us here tonight. Whether you're watching us on our YouTube channel, listening to us, by radio online. We thank you for being a part of Vero Nation. This is WSCF Vero Beach, your home for fighting Indians football. Paul, Gary, GT, Derek, and Don here tonight. All right, first down and 10 for Vero. 
at the 36. And oh, motion. Oh, my goodness. Oh, one of those silly penalties, Paul. Yep. Comfort zone, AC and heating penalty. I, I mean, you got to watch the ball. It's our receiver. He's looking right down at the ball, and he jumps the gun. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. It just kind of just eats at you a little bit. It that sure you, does. First and 15. I mean, you got first and 10. You got some things going for you. Then a penalty like that happens. Yep, they better get going here. The play clock's down at five. Two, one, hurry. And, and they're going to get another one. Now he could, Lenny called timeout. Whoa. So a timeout here stops the action for a moment. At 541 left in the fourth quarter, we're tied at 13. Durfee's Heating and Cooling, a longtime friend and supporter of Christian FM. Durfee's Heating and Cooling offers air conditioning repairs, maintenance, and new installations. Family owned and operated, serving the Treasure Coast area. Durfee's Heating and Cooling, 772-971-5884. Hey, make sure to join us uh, throughout the week inside the press box, our weekly podcast, and Gary and I will talk about this game, break it down a little bit for you, and then we'll set the stage for next week's opponent, which will be Palm Beach Gardens inside the press box, available wherever you get your podcast. We're at 541 left here in the fourth quarter. We're tied at 13 and just about had back-to-back -back penalties, so a timeout prevented a delay of game against Vero Beach. Still looking at a first and 15 from the Bulls, 41. Trips to the left side for Vero. Aronson pressured out of the pocket to the right. He's got room to run. 35, 30, 25, 20, and out of bounds. And another, oh, another flag. A late flag. I didn't even see anything. What happened over there? So the word we're getting from downstairs is a holding call. Had to move it back 10 yards, and that's still a first down. That should give still give us a first down. That's interesting. I mean, I'm not saying it happened. I just did not see it at all. There it is right there. That's a first down. Still a first yeah. down. Good run by Tyler. Yeah, but, I mean, again, come on, guys. Stop the holding. Stop these silly penalties. Yeah. You got 531 left to go in this game. Bureau Beach is on their own. I mean, at our Northwestern Bulls 25-yard 25 25. line. Mm -hmm. First down and 10. Aronson looking, looking, got to let it fly. He does. He finds a receiver, and it's caught. I believe that's Torres over there on the far side with a completion. A good job by Tyler to use his feet to kind of give some time. About a seven-yard pick up there. The second down now. Nice, nice comeback to help your quarterback. Yeah, that's what good that point. was. Come back to help them. Five minutes to go. Fourth quarter. Handoff. Hillsman. Stutter steps. And he'll only maybe get a yard out of this. Yeah. Didn't get a good surge by that offensive line right now. now they got to get like three yards here to get the first down. Clock continues to roll here. We're at 438 and counting. Vero looking at a third and three from the 18. Tied at 13. Aronson's got trips to the left side. Now whistle. Get off sides. And off sides goes against Northwestern. He jumped, he's lined up off sides on the outside, the official's saying. That's five yards, that's a first down. 
And he's calling it on the corner who lined yeah. right up into the face of our receiver, Jarvis Jacobs. And he was over probably. I've seen that. I've seen that happen uh, Wednesday night. Our guy lined up. <laughs> JV game. You guys, got, you guys got a win, too, yeah, by the way. Good man, job. Yeah, good job with, with the kids, yeah. What was that final score? 34 to 14. Yeah, nice job. Over Centennial, right? Yes. All right. Timeout's going to be taken by Vero at 413 left here. And they used their last timeout. That's it. That's it. Boy, mm, I'm not sure. All right, Gary, uh, talking, speaking of JV, you guys got a game this week, right? Uh, we got one coming up in uh, next uh, Wednesday. At uh, here's my day, here's my week. Tuesday at Caps with you and Coach. Wednesday I'm coaching the JV game uh, with uh, Coach Roach and, uh, and our staff. Uh, we play down in Central. Thursday I'm off to UCF for their opener against Kent State, and then Friday I'm right back here to do Palm Beach Gardens. You forgot Monday doing the podcast. Oh, Monday doing a podcast. Oh, you had to remind hey, me. Hey, and by the way, um, thanks for giving us your schedule. But Wednesday, what is the JV? Who are they playing where? I said Central down there. Okay, well, everybody got confused with your entire your oh, itinerary for okay. the whole week. Yeah, we play we play on the road. We, we play uh, Fort Pierce Central. <laughs> Played uh, Centennial this past, uh, this couple days ago. All right, it's first down and 10. At the 13. Jacobs, Torres, Roberts split to the left. Keeper by Aronson off the right side to the 10, down to the 5. That's huge because he... Now flag coming in late. Well, flag in the end zone. One of our linemen, offensive linemen, is all the way in the back of the end zone, and he was down on the ground. We saw the flag come out, and the word we're getting is that the, the Northwestern player yanked on his face mask and pulled him to the ground. You talk about lack of discipline and, and not being – I tell you what, Coach Harris is calling a great game. Yeah. But his team, his team is killing him as much as like mm -hmm. – I, I, I guarantee you when we total everything up, there might be over 300 yards between the two teams of penalties. I'm pretty sure we're there now. <laughs> so there has a, okay, here we go. Dead ball foul against Northwestern and against Vero. So offsetting penalties. So that ball goes back, and it's still second down now. No, oh, it was dead ball foul, so they're giving him oh, the... the he gets the yeah, yardage, brother. Yeah. You're right. Yep. You're right. Love it when you say that. Yep, I do too. If we get two yards here, I'd like it even better, or five yards. Timeout's going to be taken by Coach Harris. Did they have too many men on the field? As he was pretty adamant about taking the timeout there. Okay. They got over 200 yards of penalties. 352 to go. It's a second down and goal for Vero Beach from the five. We're tied at 13. Both teams have given up uh, scoring drives in, in this game. So it's it's been a kind of a fight all the way through. Yep. I can recall... Two scores for Northwestern they got called back, and one score for Vero Beach they got called back. So next week, week two, we've got Palm Beach Gardens. The Gators will be here to take on Vero Beach for week two. Kick off at 7 o'clock. Love to have you there. As Vero Beach making it way, makes its way back out onto the field. They got the heavy package in. Aronson up under center. 
quickly. Quick hitter off the right side, pushes ahead for a couple. Only needed two short a yard. All right, brings up now third down. That same play, run the same play. Just run it again. Got Three and a half. Time. Yeah, play clock hasn't even started. Just started now. So they can run this almost down to three minutes if they want to. Now a flag comes in from the back of the end zone. They got 12 guys on the field again. Oh, my 12 goodness. 12 guys. There they go. They had th <laughs> Heck, they had 13. One already came them off. That's 12. <laughs> now that's half the disc. That's got to be close to a first down now. I would think it would be. Yeah, first down, first and goal. All right, now what Vero can do when he starts the clock is really. Up under center, here comes Tyler. They got the, the big beefs in. Oh, the official's going to stop. A and they're saying something to, to Northwestern. I'm not sure what they're doing, but. Up under center, Aronson, quick hitter, right side. No signal yet. He's got to be in there. He's, oh, come on, guys. He's got to be close. Oh, they're going. They're spotting him short. And then Viral's very upset because, I mean, it's second down. Yeah, the good Sec thing second is, and goal. But. Yeah, the good thing is the clock's going to run a little bit more. The bad thing is we didn't get the six points. Yeah, they're trying to get Osby into the end zone here. Man, I mean, it's like the, the nose of the ball has just about have to, is almost touching the line. Aronson up under center. Keeper trying to push ahead. He's got to be in. Oh, they got to, you got to throw your hands up, refs. Come on. He just had to lean forward. And they're going to say no. Wow. Clock continues. Well, no, the clock has stopped here at 226. Now well, they're going to go back up under center now. Third and goal. Push ahead. He's in there. He's definitely in there now. Touchdown, Tyler Aronson. Caps off a 46-yard drive to take the lead here late in the fourth quarter. Two minutes and 15 seconds remain. It, 46 yards, nine plays, and a one-yard run by Aronson. And now Lewis set for the extra point. Kick is up. And no good. He oh. pushed it right. My goodness gracious alive. So it's 19-13 with 2.15 remaining in the fourth quarter. Hi, JW from Barker Air Conditioning. These hot and humid days sure do take a toll on your air conditioning system. Barker Air Conditioning offers our ESA annual or semi-annual maintenance plans to keep things in good working order. Barker Air Conditioning, servicing Indian River County since 1959. Back on. 2.15 to go. Barrel Beast just got the lead, 19-13, to 13, with a 46-yard drive. Brought to you by McCall Insurance Agency. And now it's up to the defense to see if they can put a stop together. Two missed extra points have hurt. I mean, two missed extra points yeah. has hurt this team. And now you've got a two minutes and 15 seconds. Yeah, we've already seen how explosive Northwestern can be. And oh, no. Catch, hit, flag. He's signal for fair catch. Yeah. 
Uh, that's going to give him the ball about the 45-yard line. Yeah, you didn't need that. That was He had signal for fair catch. Uh, it, and it, again, I don't know that that was the place he wanted to kick the ball. If you're going to pooch kick it, kick it to the 30 or 25 and yeah, then make course. him do the fair catch there. Right. Oh, my goodness. I mean, this is little things. And I sound very frustrated because as a player and as a as a coach and everything, you want to make the little things. You don't want them to hurt you. Right. You want them to be part of the game that you can do. Yep. You want to add the little. But that was a 15-yard penalty on a kick that it should have been deeper. Right. It should have been deeper, in my opinion. That's my opinion. So that'll put them at the 45 of Vero Beach. So. All right, let's go down to GT. Yeah, and Gary's exactly right. When you do a pooch kick, the whole idea is to not allow them to, you, you, you're, you're giving up that you can't kick it in the end zone because you got in the win. But the idea is to kick it so high and about the 20 to 25 yard line is what you're aiming for. We kicked it to the 40. Five wide, Posey. He's got pressure coming out of the pocket. He's gonna let it fly and just throws it away. He had a he had a receiver on the wheel route number four Whoa, over there. You got there. two Northwestern players down. I don't know if they collided with each other, but man, they are both down. Yeah, Glover was wide open, but the problem is he had to roll out, and roll out is tough to throw the ball 40, 50 yards yeah. downfield. Yeah. Clock will stop at 2:05, and I think. At least one of them, it's it's cramps. The other one, it looks a little more serious. They're checking the ankle area. <clears throat> so. Vero Beach is ahead, 19 to 13. We've got two minutes and five seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. As we're dealing with an injury timeout. Let's just hope the young man is okay. They played their hearts out oh tonight. My Everybody has. It's been a great game. Sides. It it's really been has a, been a great game. Yeah. I, 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 listen, the officials have called penalties on both sides. So, it, you know what I mean? It's They have. They have. And, and I think both coaches would say, we really hurt ourselves. Absolutely. I agree. You know? I totally agree. Well, while we have a moment here, i tell you about what's ahead is on the schedule for Vero Beach. After tonight, of course, they've got Palm Beach Gardens next week here at home. Then they've got an off week. They come back. They've got Fort Pierce Westwood at home. And then on September 22nd, mark this one down, folks, Sanford Seminole will be here. It's going to be a good game. Then we go on the road for the first time as Fort Pierce Central, our first district contest of the season. And Coach Mike Watkins has got the Cobras playing some better football this year, so uh, it'll be an interesting matchup. Good to see the injured Northwestern player being walking ever so gingerly, but he is walking off the field. I believe that is Danny Rodriguez. We hope that everything is okay for him. Senior, you want to make sure you can play as many games possible in your senior year. You got Montgomery, McClinton, and you've got uh, Bacon up front. Posey, pump fake, pressure coming. Now rolls out of the pocket, fires downfield. Receiver wide open, he oh. dropped it. Woo, boy. Lanier was, had it. If he catches it, that was going to be a touchdown. That's a touchdown right there. That's a touchdown. Wow. Ooh. Oh. Man, I mean to tell you, I mean, we we had pressure on the quarterback, made him go out. Yeah. The problem is we had nobody outside. He had an open lane to throw that ball. Yep. You couldn't have thrown a better pass than what he threw that time, Posey did, to Lanier. That was a rocket. That was a rocket. <laughs> wow. 
third and ten. Now they got another flag on the play for having guys, coaches on the field when the whistle had blown. When they brought the play back in. Oh, wow. Or did they take a timeout? I, don't, I know the flag is down. The but flag is down. Yeah. They got one timeout left. I'm sure they didn't want to take it then. Yeah, they're marking it off. It's 15 yards. Wow. So they go all the way back to their own 40 yard line where it'll be third down and 25. Yeah, third down and 25 with a minute 59 to go. You just got to play, you got to play aggressive, but, cons but aggressively smart. Right. You've got to play that aggressively smart. Correct. Play out here. You cannot give a, a wheel route. You've got to back up. Make sure you don't give anything over your head. Would not be surprised if they don't look at Russell on this play. Yeah. He's over here on the wide side. Yeah, he's a great athlete, man. He's. Why not? What do you got to lose? Jump ball. And, and again, here, I don't understand what the officials are talking about again. <laughs> the four of them coming together. Still got two minutes to go in this ball game. Nineteen thirteen, the score. Vero Beach with the six-point edge. Come on, guys. Let's. It's. Yeah, I don't know what the, what's happening out there. I don't know. I mean, they're they're talking. This should not take. And again, I, I'm not an official. I admire them for doing what they do. I just like griping at them at times. <laughs> I still love them. And at I, times? I, at times, but hey, it, it comes with the territory. They know that. <laughs> well, I can officially report that the uh, Titans sealed a win 22-8 to eight over Osceola. That's two teams that run that power eye. Oh, yeah. It? The, well, the single wing, right? It? Yeah. Posey launches it downfield. He's got her nobody in the area. Good coverage. Reynolds, Anderson. How about the sportsmanship there as Posey yeah. went down and. That's Mark McClinton. Good job. Fourth down coming up. They got one play to live for here with a minute 51. I'll tell you what, that, that he, here comes 12 right now. He's coming back in. Strauder. Well. Posey's going down. Yeah. So uh, po Posey. They got they had to take a time out here. And that'll be it. That'll be their last one. All right, Gary. There's the obvious here. Okay, they got to get 25 yards. Yes. So do you play this kind of like cloud type of coverage yeah, yeah, or what yeah. do you do? What you do is you will you will spread your guys. What you want to do is you keep them up front. Mm -hmm. Now they're saying the game's going, the play's going. They're, they didn't call timeout. Their coach, but they haven't started the clock. Yeah, neither the play clock or the well, game that, clock. I, we yeah. were all under the impression that they called timeout because they went to their coaches. Agreed. They should have been an yeah. automatic timeout charge to them. Well, I think maybe because Posey went down on the ground it was an injury yeah all right Strotter out on the field at quarterback with the five wide set trying to get some pressure Bacon's got him That's he's it. down Indian. he's down Rivers and Bacon got the pressure and brought him down and Vero Beach is going to uh, I don't know whether you say upset or not but it was a big time. The Giants, the about, battle of the about, Giants. They're going to come out of here with a win. They're going to come out of here with a win tonight. 
and it sets the tone for this season. There will be a couple great games down the road. You're going to see Seminole come in here, and you're going to see we got to go. We got Treasure Coast, I believe, on the uh, at home too, don't we? Is that no, on the road? We, we play Treasure Coast on the road. On the road. That'll be October 27th. And back-to-back -back weeks, we'll have Mark, actually three weeks consecutive, Centennial, Martin County, Treasure Coast. Vero Beach, Aronson will just take a knee here. I don't know if Coach Harris will just spend the timeout for spending the timeout or not, but so far they're letting the clock roll. Wow, what a game it has been. Back and forth. And well, really, Gary. Whoa, 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 whoa. It, it's got to go to 40 seconds. It's got to go to 40 seconds instead of what 25. Well, it hasn't even started yet. Yeah, I know, but it should be 40 seconds. The officials are wrong on this one because after a continued play, it goes 40 well, seconds. It doesn't matter. The game clock's still going. Oh, yeah, I know, but they're trying to allow it to catch up. They, you have. Inside a minute left. And Vero Beach. I, I really think. And take uh, one more knee and this will be done. Yeah, it will be. And look, you know, if you're going to lose a game, lose it in the first part of the season is oh, not absolutely, bad. Absolutely, yeah. You know. Hey. You know, you never want to lose. I, you know, you love a competitor's heart. Absolutely love it. And, you know, Northwestern's going to be disappointed. But you know what? They'll have to take a hard look in the mirror because they did it to themselves. The penalties definitely hurt them. I and, you know, you can make the argument about, you know, whether those are legit penalties or not. But the bottom line is penalties hurt them tonight. I agree No doubt with about you. it. Clock will stop at 42 seconds. I believe they took their last time out here, Northwestern. Stick around. We'll have our Roy Bell Grading Services Pulse Game Show. Get a chance to talk to some coaches. We'll talk to our players of the game, and we'll also have our play of the game for tonight. All they have to do is just take a snap, take a knee, and this one's history. Well, they still haven't run the play clock, but now they have run in the play clock. Aronson will take that knee. Clock will start. Uh, it's over. 35 seconds in the play clock, and that will do it. Vero Beach it. is going to earn its first victory of the 2023 season with a 19-13 win over Miami Northwestern, the heavyweight bout to open up week number one. We'll step aside. The Roy Bell Grading Services postgame show is coming up next. This is Fighting Indians Football. Welcome to the Fighting Indians postgame show presented by Roy Bell Grading Services. HBS Glass is a proud supporter of Fighting Indians Athletics and Christian FM. Since 1973, HBS Glass has served homeowners, architects, and contractors in the Vero Beach area. HBS Glass offers hurricane impact windows and doors. HBS Glass, 722, third place, or hbsglass.com. Thanks to HBS Glass. Cafe 66, located on US 1, just south of 8th Street. At Cafe 66, our breakfast menu is all about variety. From biscuits and gravy, to country fried steak and eggs, to Nutella stuffed French toast. Our lunch and dinner menus have something for everyone. From barbecue platters, to unique burgers. Our hours are online at Cafe66Vero.com. We proudly support the Fighting Indians. The Fighting Indians rely on teamwork, and so does Christian FM. One of those teammates is Scott Sporting Goods. Scott Sporting Goods features an array of sporting equipment, including clothes and shoes. They are also the ones that fit our Fighting Indians broadcast team with the Fighting Indians apparel. Located in downtown Vero Beach, 1407 20th Street. Their phone number is 778-0661. Thanks to Scott Sporting Goods. Cafe 66, located on US 1, just south of 8th Street. At Cafe 66, our breakfast menu is all about variety. From biscuits and gravy, to country fried steak and eggs, to Nutella stuffed French toast. 
Our lunch and dinner menus have something for everyone, from barbecue platters to unique burgers. Our hours online at Cafe66Vero.com. We proudly support the Fighting Indians. Welcome to the Fighting Indians Post Game Show, presented by Roy Bell Grading Services. The G. How about it, GP? <laughs> I'm Come a, on. I'm, I'm excited and I'm happy, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you right now, both teams played their hearts out out there, yeah. and there was so many penalties, so many penalties that we saw. We The officials did everything they could to keep the game going, and I'm not saying that they were wrong. I'm just saying that both teams played some undisciplined football at times right. out there, and uh, – Vero ended up winning a hard-fought ball game, uh, and, and really, it, it was an ebb and flow game. Vero started out, boom, I thought, man, we look good, we look sharp, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then, all of a sudden, they got some momentum, and they didn't get the two touchdowns, and uh, uh, it, it, it's, tell you what, I'll take it. I like the idea. I like the way our kids played hard all the way through. They fought hard. They played a team that was very physical. I don't know who, I mean, I don't know if the Titans are going to be that physical. I don't know if Seminole, you know, are, are going to, San Francisco is going to be that physical or that fast yeah. uh, team. We'll see. But I tell you what, they gave us a, a great game and they, they showed us what we need to do if we're going to go deep into the playoffs. You're 100% correct. 19-13 is the final score. Vero Beach gets the win over Miami Northwestern. They've improved now to 1-0. and oh, And uh, they'll get set to uh, face their next opponent, which will be Palm Beach Gardens. And I think, Gary, one of the things, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, is you got to be careful that you don't overlook an opponent just because you got other big opponents on the schedule. As my good friend and our good friend Ronnie Self would say, you're absolutely right, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it. But, yeah, it, it, it was a – I don't want to say a complete deja vu from last year but or from last week, but it was a very similar, similar in the fact that the penalties stalled our drives at times. Thankfully, Miami Northwestern had enough penalties that it helped us in certain situations. Both teams shot themselves in the foot in the first half. In the second half, okay, I, I really down. thought that it was uh, Northwestern shot themselves in the foot. All right. Well, with that, let's head down to the side or to the field. Actually, GT Paris has got our coach. So take it away, GT. Well, I'm down here with Coach Ray Hall, and I think it's only fitting that I grab a Miami guy. He born in, down in Miami, so he knows Miami football. He knows the talent. He knows what you're going to face when you face a team like that. So, Coach, a lot of penalties tonight. It was a heavyweight battle. Let's talk a little bit about the game from the defensive side, what you saw, what you liked. Well, what I liked is we came out with a plan early on, and we played it pretty well. Um, you know, ended up giving a couple big plays on a screen, and when we look back at it, you know, you get a little bit upset going into halftime. We're giving up that play right before the half. And as you watch it, you look at it, and you just see some bad angles, some poor tackling, just a couple things, but shouldn't take away from the great half that we played going into that play. So kind of gathered back together as a staff and, you know, wanted to make sure that we let the kids know how proud of them we were and how hard they played that first half and that we were going to go out and win the second half and go win this football game. And that was the, that was the plan you know, coming out. And, and with a team like Miami, you know, like I said, there was a lot of penalties. So what do you tell your kids to not get in that mindset? How, what do you just, is it, is it all about discipline? Is it all about the practice you've had? How do you counterbalance that? You know, again, they're kids. So yeah. sometimes you could say it, you know, all you want and in and, and the heat of the moment, they react and, and uh, but we do talk discipline a lot, a lot, you know, and we overemphasize it and it doesn't always you know, we still kind of make mistakes again. They're kids, but we, we knew that this was going to be a game of emotions. And uh, we, again, we preached that don't give up anything. Don't give them anything. You know, we felt like we could win this game as long as we didn't give them, you know, opportunities or freebies. And we kind of did. You know, we had a couple 15-yard penalties that extended drives that we didn't get off the field. Had a big one late on the kickoff where we, you know, and so. But again, the heat of the moment sometimes. You know, you lose it. But I think they did a good job today. I, I think us as the elders and that have seen Miami Northwestern, you, like I said, you're from down that area. 
you know how big of a win this is because that is a talented, talented team. I don't know if your kids realize that now, but does this big of a win, do you think this sets the tone or, or, or do they understand how big of a, a team that is they just beat? Yeah, I, I think they do. Um, you know, they, they love that Miami was coming up here. They love the opportunity kind of while you play here at Vero Beach. It's for those type of opportunities to bring a team of that caliber up. That team's loaded and always has been. If you go back and look at the history of Miami Northwestern, there's NFL guys all over the place. And I'm sure they got a couple on this team that we just played right now. But uh, we got some pretty good players too, and we're tough, and they just wanted the opportunity to show, you know, hey, we play some pretty good football up here in Indian River County as well. Thanks, Coach. Hey, great. Enjoy it. Good win. We'll see you next week. Likewise. All right. If I'm still on, I want to say this is my man Ronnie Self. It was tough at breakfast this morning not having Ronnie there as my right-hand man. Hey, and I just want Ronnie to know, and I'm sure he's smiling. We got you one, Ronnie, and hope we can get you a lot more the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Coach. We love you. Love you. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks a lot, GT. Yeah, as always, it's always special uh, with a win. Of course, you know, in spite of everything, if you can get a win out of this, you walk away with a smile on your face. I'm smiling. And, uh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, I think we have an opportunity now to get back down to the field and uh, get with Derek West. He's got our Scott Sporting Goods Players of the Game. DW. Down here with Elijah Anderson. Um, you might not know him as Elijah Anderson. I know him as Xbox. And Xbox, you had a had a great, great, great interception that really changed the complexion of the game in the third quarter. I really thought we seized the momentum with your interception. Talk about that play. I mean, I forgot what play he called, but I was just at the right spot at the right time and whipped it off for the guys. Absolutely. It looked like you guys were able to settle in in the second half and kind of clean up some mistakes and, and really buckle down in the, in the second half. Yes, sir. Uh, absolutely. What, what does a win like this mean, uh, kind of going through the rest of the season? Uh, uh, very good Northwestern, Miami Northwestern team. What does a win mean like this, and, and how can it motivate you in the rest of the season? I mean, we knew we were going to win because we put, we put more to it than they did. We really wanted it. But, yeah. Well, well thank you, Xbox. Go celebrate with your teammates, all right? All right. All I right. also have Tyler Aronson down here. Tyler's coming eventually. He's kind of a popular <laughs> man right now. Uh, but I want to get down to Tyler Aronson, our Scott Sporting Goods uh, offensive player of the game. Uh, Tyler, one of my favorite people. I think we have more conversations, Tyler, on the sidelines than any player in recent history. But what a, what a great second half, at least I should say. Uh, you were able to get out a performance and, and pull out a big win tonight. Thank you. I appreciate that. Obviously, we started the game off with a big touchdown called back, but ultimately we kept fighting. Um, there were some big plays called back that they had and some that we had as well. So I feel like uh, truly in the end, it just came down to who wanted it more. And I feel like we just kept our heads down and stayed focused and didn't dwell on the past. And I'm super proud of everyone. We've been working for our, we've been working our tails off, um, not just this week, but all summer long and stuff like that. Um, so I'm super I'm super happy to be able to spend my uh, senior season with such a special group of guys and be able to play for a coach like Coach Jay. I'm truly grateful. So. Absolutely. How can a win like this, that's kind of a gut check type of a win, uh, a win that kind of comes down to really the last play of the game, how, how does this help you guys in terms of what you want to accomplish for the season? Honestly, I think it's huge. I think we're battle-tested already. It was a, it was a complete dogfight tonight. Um, and I think it's only going to prepare us for games later on in the season, and it's not going to be a surprise when it comes when the same or similar situation comes up later in the season because we've already had it. So, well, Tyler, have fun tonight. Ice up and get some rest. I know you're probably pretty sore, and go celebrate with your teammates. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, DW. That is Tyler Aronson and Elijah Anderson, aka Xbox, our Scott Sporting Goods players of the game. We'll take a quick break. We come back. We'll get our play of the game and we'll give you the final stat line numbers and get you set for next week's game against Palm Beach Gardens. It's the Roy Bell Grading Services post game show. It continues right after this. Thanks to Roy Bell Grading Services for sponsoring Fighting Indians football and the Fighting Indians post game show. Hi, my name is Chase Bell and my father Roy has served Indian River County in the grading industry for over 40 years. My family and I are proud supporters of Christian FM and the Vero Beach Fighting Indians. Go Vero! No job too small or too big. Roy Bell Grading Services. We roll the earth. 772 473 
1-800-242-4559. Roy Bell Grading Services. Thanks to Roy Bell Grading Services for sponsoring Fighting Indians football and the Fighting Indians post-game show. Hi, my name is Chase Bell, and my father, Roy, has served Indian River County in the grading industry for over 40 years. My family and I are proud supporters of Christian FM and the Vero Beach Fighting Indians. Go Vero! No job too small or too big. Roy Bell Grading Services. We roll the earth. 772-473-4559. Roy Bell Grading Services. Welcome back to the Roy Bell Grading Services post game show. Along with Gary Paris, I'm Paul Tipton as uh, we wrap up the first win and first game of the season against Miami Northwestern. Vero Beach gets the win 19 to 13. And uh, we figured it would be a dog fight. I mean, you got two perennial type of teams like this. You know that one thing for sure doesn't matter how far a, a team gets down, they got the ability to come back. They got the explosiveness. And I think that's true on both sides of the ball. Coach Harris has a lot of talent on that team. They're going to get better as this season. They're young. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of young kids on that uh, Northwestern team. Those young kids are going to start playing better. They're going to, you know, they're going to see what they need to do, improve their game. That can be a, that's going to be a team of the future. Tough to overcome 32 penalties for 243 yards. That's I hard. I don't know that I've ever, 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 ever seen anything like that before. And, and most of them, I mean, again, I say most of them, I mean, they were penalties, and the ones mm-hmm. against us. Yeah, uh, the ones we were against ended up us. with uh, fourteen for one fifteen, <laughs> over three, almost three, uh, almost four hundred yards of penalties. Yeah, that's just unheard of, and uh, that's just a situation where you you just uh, both teams need to work on their discipline. Both 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 teams need to, you know, again when you have a lot of young kids, that that's going to happen, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm sure Coach Harris will. We'll sit down with his bunch and say, hey, look, we can't do this again. And, you know, Vero, that's two games in a row. We've been, uh, you know, penalized very Correct. well. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's take a look at the Durfee's heating and cooling final stats for tonight. For Miami Northwestern, 10 first downs on the night. They had two turnovers. Uh, like we said, 32 penalties for 243 yards. A total offense of 202 yards. They got 13 points on the board. For Vero Beach, it was 140 yards on the ground, 162 through the air. Tyler tonight, 10 of 23 for 162 yards and two touchdowns, or excuse me, one touchdown. He ran in a couple of touchdowns, which was nice as well. And in fact, that will be our Midas of Vero Beach play of the game. Tyler running it in to give us the go-ahead score and ultimately win the game. So good job, Tyler, with that play tonight. And uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, you'll see that replay there. We had 18 first downs tonight, two turnovers, uh, 14 penalties for 115 yards, and a total of 302 yards of offense. But the most important thing, we had more points than our opponent. That's always the bottom line is what you're looking for. No matter how bad the game looked or how, you know, the, the chemistry of the game went, you just want to have the W. It's not a pretty W, but it's a W. Now, we haven't checked around the district to see who else uh, got wins tonight, but we do know that Treasure Coast got theirs. Yeah, Treasure Coast beat up on uh, Osceola. Yeah, they did. And you know that that's just going to be the one that's sitting out there on the calendar, folks. And, Gary, we started to talk about this at the beginning of the postgame show. It's like, okay, you got this win. Now, this was a tough, emotional game for Vero Beach, a good win but now they have to be able to put this one to bed and get ready for Palm Beach Gardens. Let me let me let me throw this at you. I think this team makes Vero Beach this game. I think they found out that hey, we beat a very athletic team. We beat a team that was a little more physical at times mm-hmm. than we were. I think this makes Vero Beach a better team and I think it helps them against the Treasure Coast, against the Seminoles, the teams that you play down the road in that uh and, you know, in the farther in the middle yeah, of the season. And I hear what you're saying. I guess my concern would be don't just focus on those games. you got to look at the ones before and after those. I yeah. think this game makes you a better team. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, uh, we got the Garden Gators coming in next week. Uh, game time will be at 7 o'clock. Looking forward to it. Our coverage will begin at 6 p.m. Uh, with countdown to kickoff. Uh, any thoughts about the Gators? I mean, we don't really know much about them right now. I, I, I really don't know if they're having a down year this year or if they're having an up year this year. We don't and, – and I think they're always – they made the playoffs last year. You know they're going to be good. They play us hard every time they get a chance to play us. So, we'll, I'm expecting them – to play a very physical, tough game. I want to thank our crew, starting with our video director, Jay Kendall, along with Brian Lewis, the assistant director, uh, Keegan Ingram and Ian Salvatore and Preston Lloyd, our camera operators. And uh, I want to thank Jacqueline Tipton, who is our studio engineer back at the home base. Jesse Kriske for uh, directing us and keeping us uh, on track most of the time. And I want to thank our executive producer of Christian FM Sports, John Hamilton. For the rest of the crew... Don Dexter took care of the stats for us tonight. Derek West, GT Paris on the sidelines. Bobby Paris handled the interviews. My buddy over here, Gary Paris, good job analyzing everything tonight. You did too, man. Call and me a play-by-play, bro. It was yeah. another fun night. We'll see you next week here at the Citrus Bowl. Palm Beach Garden Gators, 7 p.m. kickoff. We'll begin at 6 p.m. with countdown to kickoff. We thank you for joining us. Barrow Nation, as always, go Indians. Go!